Microphone one, check one, two. Microphone one, check one, two, three, four. Microphone check one, two. Microphone check one, two, three, four.
Good evening from the Buffalo State Ice Arena, where we have a terrific matchup in store tonight in the Collegiate Hockey Federation. It is the Buffalo State Bengals hosting the University of Georgia. Hello and welcome to the Ivy League Pharmacy pregame show. I'm Aaron Elprin alongside Sean McHugh as we are moments away from puck drop between Buff State and Georgia. And Sean, this is two CHF powers from last year meeting here early on this season. Absolutely, Aaron. Two of the top teams coming in from the 2021-22 season. On the visiting side, we have the Georgia Bulldogs, a noteworthy school, a noteworthy school by name alone. Their hockey team also comes in with, with respectability to say the very least. Champions of college hockey South last season, a top five team nationally throughout the entire season. While the Bengals come in off a 17-win season where they won their division in the UNYCHL, made it to the league title game, and just like these Georgia Bulldogs, went to CHF Nationals in Philly. Yeah, both, school, both schools, Sean, I think are eager to get back to the Fed Cup and maybe uh, to right some wrongs that happened there. Both teams went 2-1 and one in Philadelphia. They both lost tough games in the preliminaries, so they didn't. They weren't able to advance into the quarterfinals. It was Buff State losing to the eventual champion Babson. Georgia, meantime, lost to their conference foe, Alabama, on day two. So we know that both schools are looking ahead toward the end of the season, and uh, it's good to have these early season challenges like this one to get themselves ready for those late season ones. Absolutely, and Georgia comes in a little bit battle-tested in their own right. They're coming in with a 2-2 two and two record, where they're two, where you know, two wins against Middle Tennessee State and their losses coming to South Carolina and the Tennessee Volunteers. Meanwhile, the Bengals come in with a one and one record, with a close back and forth battle against Brockport, and then a tough five one loss uh, to the University of Buffalo Bulls last Saturday to renew that rivalry that's been developed over the last couple of years. Yeah, it really is a good chance with this game for both teams to start moving toward a positive track. Bengals uh, should have a more complete lineup tonight for Coach Tim Turner. Six of their key contributors were not in the lineup against UB. While at Game 5 for a somewhat younger Georgia team, Coach John Camp hopes that some of his first-year players are now more fully integrated into the team's systems and ready to go for the rest of the season. Absolutely, and they're going to take the baptism by fire approach by challenging this young and experienced roster and taking them up to a trip to the Northeast up into Western New York. And then tomorrow, it doesn't get any easier for them as they head down to Olean uh, to play the St. Bonaventure Bonnies, who are bringing in a loaded roster this year. And it's their home opener to celebrate their 2022 UNYCHL championship. So that's going to be an emotional game with a stacked roster. And it really doesn't get any easier on Sunday for the Bulldogs when they go to Dwyer Arena to meet the Niagara Purple Eagles. So all three of the Georgia opponents were at Nationals last year. And uh, it's really a challenge, though, that head coach John Camp says that they've been looking forward to. Quote, you have to play the best to be the best is the way that he phrased it. So uh, you know that this Georgia team is excited for the challenge that they have here this weekend in Western New York. Absolutely. And growing up as hockey players like you and I have, it's also great for team bonding to go on the road. Um, like this. So this is really good to get this out of the way early. Like you say, a young team, this is great for coming together. And like I said, though, it's not all fun and games now. This is important. This is an important out-of-conference game. These matchups will go a long way to determine national rankings. It is not crazy to think that Buff State and Georgia, along with all of Georgia's opponents coming up, will meet again at some point down the road. Yeah, when you look at it, it's those crossover games between the leagues, like this one between the UNYCHL and College Hockey South. That's really how we get a true indicator of relative strength of some of these teams between the different CHF conferences. We talked about it a bunch last year that there just hadn't been enough of that crossover play to get a real feel for where everybody stacked up nationally, and it really wasn't until we got to Philadelphia in the national tournament that we were able to kind of see how it all shook out and how uh, how it really looked and which teams were truly the best in the nation. It was a uh, it was a great tournament and a great way to determine exactly who the, uh, the top team in the country was by the end of that week. But uh, I think we'll have a little better sense this year in terms of the rankings and how they go throughout the season. Just a, a real true sense of where everybody stacks up because there's so much more of that out of conference play. You just look at the Buffalo State schedule. They have this matchup against Georgia. They have Delaware on their schedule at, in January, as well as those three games against the Empire Conference at the uh, Elmira, Inv the Invitational at Elmira. Sorry, I got to get the name of that inv uh, that event correctly. Uh, but it's a uh, that's a perfect example of what has been really a focus for a lot of programs in the CHF is to give yourself that test out of conference. So not only are you battle tested by the time you get to nationals. But also, there is a, a, a much better sense of 
where everybody stacks up and who's the, the best and worst teams truly are because it was a little vague last year, I think is the best way to best way to phrase it because some teams just didn't have a whole lot of uh, matchups with uh, out-of-conference teams, so there was a little bit more mystery to some of them. Absolutely, and like you, like you said, Aaron, the best way to determine what the overall strength of all the competition when you go to a national tournament is going to be is to have the teams play against each other. Like the, this, this argument as to strength of schedule goes to college sports, even into the pros. You see, like with the, I'll use just because we do have the, na- the college football national champions in the building tonight, we use the college football playoff as an example. There's always going to be a team that probably shouldn't be there, like Notre Dame. So I'm an Irish fan, but <laughs> facts are facts. They they get there, they shouldn't be there, and it's a way, and it's and you know it's a game that shouldn't be there. A team like like at one time when Notre Dame made it, Georgia had a better case to make it. They didn't because of ranking. So now, like you're saying, we're getting the crossovers. We do have the ability to broadcast the games as well all over the place so we can get in contact with players. The tape's out there. You can see how everybody stacks up. And what it boils down to, it's a great way to grow the game and to grow the league as well. I mean, this is, pre- I mean, this is pretty cool to say, you know, the Georgia Bulldogs are here. It's, yeah. it's, it's cool. I mean, and you got, yeah, you got three different upstate New York schools playing against Georgia here. Uh, Cortland, meanwhile, is uh, is go- heading downstate to play uh, Fairfield and Farmingdale this weekend. Two other powerhouses. You got a ton of uh, a ton of crossover play going on across the CHF. Great I think hockey. that uh, the the focus of the programs will really make that an improvement this year across the CHF. This is a uh, a big North versus South CHF matchup that we're getting ready for here at the Buffalo State Ice Arena tonight, and it should really be a fabulous matchup between this school from College Hockey South as well as one school from the UNYCHL. Our support, is, our support for Buffalo State College Club Hockey comes from Militello Realty, Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker. Also by Ivy Lee Pharmacy, a locally owned neighborhood pharmacy for over 60 years in Kenmore. Supporters also include Poolmart, your family fun store. Visit them online, poolmartonline.com. Supporters also include Colvin Cleaners, dry cleaning, wash and fold, tailoring, and all garment services. Colvin Cleaners is where the Buffalo State College hockey team goes to make sure that their uniforms are the sharpest in the league. Supporters also include Envious Gameware, the official uniform provider of Buffalo State College club hockey. And our supporters also come from 412 Communications, the new gold standard for digital media solutions for for small businesses, 412communications.com. We're about ready to get started here. Warm-ups have completed. The ice has been resurfaced, and both teams are now stepping onto the ice in special camouflage uniforms here tonight as it is Military Appreciation Night here at the Buffalo State Ice Arena. An added little bonus to this great matchup here tonight, Sean. Absolutely, and Aaron, you know how much I love uniforms, and both teams are bringing the military fire tonight. Buffalo State coming out in their dark camouflage colors with the digital camo with the orange striping. Georgia Bulldogs coming out in the winter camo, a little Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 look to it, with their signature red helmets and their black and red socks. Black and orange versus black and white, and we got two big-time college college hockey programs ready to face off. Should be a heck of a matchup. A uh, two CHF powers from last year meeting in an early non-conference tilt. Face-off is just moments away. Good evening and welcome to the Buffalo State Ice Arena. Thank you for joining us for tonight's Collegiate Hockey Federation matchup between the University of Georgia and your Buffalo State College Bengals. Tonight is Military Appreciation Night as the Bengals honor those that have served our country both home and abroad. As well as tonight's fundraising efforts going on to support local veteran organizations, we'd like to honor several service members of the Buffalo State team, both past and present. First, Casey Wisniewski. He was the Bengals goaltender during the team's inaugural season. Currently, Casey is the senior medic of the 152nd Engineer Support Company. Casey served six years in the New York Army National Guard, three years with the U.S. Army's 3rd Infantry Division, and one year with the 101st Airborne Division in total. Ten years of service to his country. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome senior medic Casey Wisniewski. Also joining Casey for our ceremonial puck drop tonight is our arena engineer, Dave Gorski. Dave is a four-year veteran 
of the United States Navy. We'd like to thank our arena engineer, Dave Gorski, for his service to our country as well as his service here in the arena. Also, current Buffalo State defenseman Bobby Staniszewski, who served his country as well and served his country very proudly in the United States Marine Corps. He was stationed in Southern California where he worked on the amphibious assault vehicle and he was deployed in the Middle East in 2021 where he was part of Operation Inherent Resolve with the Navy SEALs in Somalia. We'd like to thank him for his service as well as Dave Gorski and Casey Wisniewski as well as everybody else here in, in the building tonight that has served our country and served it so proudly. I'd like to now take a moment to introduce the starting lineups. First for tonight's visitors, the University of Georgia Bulldogs. At left wing, number 17, Matt Bigda. At center, number 29, Declan Conway. At right wing, number 26, Josh Mazaros. On defense, number six, Zachary Puma. On defense, number 16, Luke Burnett. Starting in goal, number 35, Nicholas Newbold. The head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs is John Camp. And now the starting lineup for your Buffalo State College Bengals. Starting at left wing, from Kenmore, New York, number eight, Ben Gallivan. At center, from Eden, New York, the captain, number 28, Joe Lo Tempio. At right wing, from Grand Island, New York, number nine, Elliot Hunt. Starting on defense, number 22, from Kenmore, New York, Ryan Hahn. And from Lancaster, New York, also on defense, number 29, Cole Newman. Starting in goal from Charlotte, North Carolina, number one, A.J. White. The head coach of the Bengals is Tim Turner with assistant coaches Jeff Shefchek and Pat Krebs. At this time, we ask that you rise if you're able and stand for the singing of our national anthems. It's a North versus South CHF matchup tonight from the Buffalo State Ice Arena. The Buffalo State Bengals playing host to the University of Georgia Bulldogs. 
and it's Military Appreciation Night here at the Buffalo State Ice Arena. It should be a heck of a matchup as both teams are uh, outfitted in some beautiful looking uniforms. And uh, now we're going to have a ceremonial puck drop. Casey Wisniewski from the uh, original Buffalo State Club hockey team back in 2017 out there for that as the uh, just kind of wrapping up some things here in the pregame ceremonies. As mentioned, it is Military Appreciation Night here at the Buffalo State Ice Arena. The team is running several fundraisers for local veterans organizations and honoring multiple uh, veterans that are here on both rosters. A couple of different uh, veterans uh, that have both represented the Buffalo State team in the past as well as currently. And out there right now for the ceremonial puck drop is uh, Bobby, Bobby Staniszewski, Buff State defenseman, as well as Matt Bigda from the University of Georgia Bulldogs. Now we're ready to get started here for puck drop between the Bulldogs and Bengals. This one should be a great game. Hello, my name's Aaron Elprin alongside Sean McHugh for the call of tonight's game. Our producer, John Dwyer, as well as camera operator Jeff Jazerowski, the full crew here on hand for tonight's game. First time together. And boy, this one should be a heck of a one. It's good that we got everyone together for just a, a, a premium matchup early in the season. Absolutely, and this is as good as it gets early. You got a top five team coming in from nationals and a team that has had and continues to have national championship aspirations. No reason for them not to this year as well. Like you said, military appreciation night. The teams are good, the uniforms are amazing. It's a, it's a Friday night here, Aaron. What more could you ask for if you're a hockey fan? Really a chance for a national statement victory for either of these two teams. They both went to nationals last year. Both didn't make it out of pool play, so there's a lot of motivation on both sides of the rink here to improve on their finishes in Philadelphia. That starts early in the season with challenging matchups like this one. Absolutely. Both teams wanted to make the statement nationally early. Here's the chance to do it. We are underway from the Buffalo State Ice Arena. Appreciate you joining us here on the Nickel City Hockey Network as we bring you live coverage of Buffalo State College Club Hockey. And puck inside the Buff State zone here in the early going as the Bengals try to get it out. Ryan Hahn unable to do so, and it's kept in by the Bulldogs. They try to put some pressure on in the far corner. Captain Lotempio down low, trying to dig that puck out of there up against the boards. Two different Georgia players there trying to get it out as well. Eventually it's uh, dug out of there by Cole Newman and played back to the point, but kept in there at the far point as Georgia has a little bit of time here in the offensive zone. Not a whole lot set up quite yet. Shot coming in there, Zachary Puma letting that one go, but it didn't get to the cage. Now the Bengals try to find possession here in the near corner, but it comes out in front and a hard wrist shot let go by Declan Conway, just missing the top corner. Georgia keeping it going here in the offensive zone. Conway has the puck on his stick again here in the near corner. Spins out of the corner and gets the pass behind the net. Now has it on his stick again below the goal line. Conway retreats from the net and then fires a quick shot. It goes just wide. Now the Bengals look to clear. Han does get it to the blue line and barely over. Now Georgia's going to have to tag up. They take advantage of the moment to make a change. Bengals get it quickly up ice. Elliott Hunt in across the blue line. Hunt takes a hit along the blue line as he dumps it in. And now Puma looks to start the breakout for Georgia. But Hunt there getting in the way of a pass along the far boards. Back to the point, kept in by Thornton. His pass, though, intercepted by Jack Gannon. And Gannon makes sure that puck gets out of the zone, but too slow for icing. Brutal change by Hunt right there. I almost got caught with too many, too many men right there. Probably a spot where he wanted to go for that change after he dumped it in. Probably just extended that shift a little bit too much. Bengals don't end up getting burned for it, however. Puck comes back through the neutral zone as Georgia finding possession of it inside their own end, looking to get that puck up ice. Puck up in the in the air right now in the neutral zone. Finally settled down. Now it's Sardina picking it up there. Sardina and across the blue line lets a hard shot go. That one just misses the net wide as uh, he was looking to start off this game like he started the last two games. He had the first goal against Brockport as well as the first goal of the game last week against UB. I'd appreciate it if he gave me a period before he gave me another heart attack this year, Aaron. Well... He uh, wanted to make sure you were paying attention right away, so two minutes in, make sure you're on your toes. I'm there. I'm there. I need a glass of water. Bengals making a change here. Georgia with plenty of room to move that puck up ice. Connect on a couple passes in the neutral zone. Daniel Crawford dumps it into the Bengals zone, then heads to the bench for a change. Some pressure there from Eberly, but uh, evading that and getting the puck up ice is Thornton. Thornton connects with a pass to Gosin, but Gosin unable to get that puck out of the zone. Now Guerrero trying to do so on the far side. Gets it back to Han. Now Han reverses course here to the near boards. 
Gosen takes a good solid hit there, but fights through it to make a pass up ice. Guerrero now coming in two on one. Gets that pass in front to Crapsy. Oh. Just couldn't quite get a hold of that puck. Good play by the netminder Newbold to read that play and get that poke check out there before Crapsy was able to get that golden opportunity. Great job there by Gosen taking that hit to allow that scoring chance. Crapsy with another chance here in front. Couldn't quite get that one settled down to get the shot in on goal as uh, Newbold kind of made an awkward save there and the rebound was just sitting there for Crapsy for a moment. A little bit more than three minutes into a uh, quick first pace here of the first period. Both teams just uh, going end-to-end -end here in the action as it's carried into the offensive zone now by the Georgia Bulldogs. They look to set up here in the offensive zone. Shot coming in from the point goes just wide. Now the four-check pressure being set up here by the Bulldogs, but it's going to be Stotes picking it up in the near corner and dropping it back to Hahn. Hahn with a little bit of room to operate, but he takes a hit there. A little bit of difficulty getting it away from that four-checker. Finally gets that one up ice, but that pass is intercepted. Shot coming in from the high slot. Goes just wide, but right off the backboard. It's almost a second chance there as Whitwer was right on the doorstep. Bengals do clear the zone here, but Georgia looking to come right back in a hurry. Hahn's going to have to be quick to get that one up ice. He gets it to Stotes and now into the offensive zone. Stotes on his backhand, decides just to circle and look for a pass. Takes a shot there. It ends up getting deflected up into the air towards the far boards. Settled down over there, and now it's Whitwer looking to start the breakout. Campbell with the pass there up ice. A nice stick there in the neutral zone as that was Cole Newman reading that play nicely from his point position. Stepped right into his man there in the neutral zone, Daniel Bardo. Yeah, so that's a great pinch there by Newman. Laying the, lumber, laying the stick right there on the breakout. That was going to be a three-on-two, but he stopped that right in his tracks. Never shy about jumping in there with the physical play. Timed that one perfectly. Puck comes back to the Georgia point. Shot is taken from there. A little bit of difficulty in handling it for A.J. White, but his defenseman Mitch Thornton picks him up, makes sure that puck gets out of the zone. Georgia, though, sends it quickly back in. Zachary Puma making sure that the puck ends up back in the Bengals zone. And now it's going to be Newman trying to start the breakout there, but he has two different Georgia players on him. Puck on the side of the net, it comes out in front. Two different Georgia players there, two good saves there by A.J. White just getting that right skate on it as there were two different Georgia players on the doorstep and no Bengals nearby to help. Then a backdoor pass comes right out to Bigda and he's got nothing but a yawning cage to fire that one into. It's 1-0 Georgia as they had put on a little bit of pressure here in the last few moments. Eventually they get the break they're looking for. Puck comes across to Bigda and he's got nothing but net to fire it into. No, that was starting to feel like a matter of when, not if, Aaron. The Bengals just got caught. They were tired. They were at the end of their shifts. And Georgia just moving the puck, snapping it around with precision. A.J. White had to make a couple saves, but one finally snuck to the back door on him, and they had a wide open net. So a little bit less than uh, five minutes into the action here at the 458 point. It is the Georgia Bulldogs getting on the board first here in this one. And now Georgia with the early 1-0 lead here in this contest. First Georgia goal scored by number 17, Matt Bigda. Assist to number 29, Declan Conway, and number 16, Luke Burnett. Bigda from Conway and Burnett. Time of the Georgia goal, 4.58. Puck comes slowly back into the Buff State end, not fast enough for icing. And the Bengals will set up their breakout there as it's Ryan Hahn on the far side, gets that one up ice. Now Ben Galvin into the offensive zone. Gallivan with a little bit of room on that far side, sidesteps his man there and gets a low shot in on goal. Save made there by Newbold. As now George is looking to set up that breakout, they had plenty of room to do so. Pass doesn't quite connect here in the near boards. Bengals able to keep it in. Gannon now looking to start the breakout for Georgia. He's got plenty of room to get that pass up ice. Another one-touch pass, and it's in across the blue line. Georgia now looking to set it up here in the offensive zone. Comes back to the point to Parente. His shot comes in. Looks like he got deflected late. Might have hit Cole Newman on the way in. A little bit difficult to read that one for A.J. White, but he did get a piece of it and sent it wide. Now a shot comes in from the right point. That one's deflected on its way. It goes up into the protective netting. So we have our first actual whistle here that wasn't after a goal. And uh, six minutes into the game, a little bit more than six minutes in. A lot of fast-paced action so far, Sean. Oh, yeah. And Georgia's on the board first. Absolutely, yeah. We are getting treated to the pace we knew and hoped for or that we were going to get today, and I don't see that slowing down anytime. Eventually, these teams are going to get a feel for the game, and the speed's just going to ratchet up even more. Bengals looking to stretch the ice there with that long pass through the neutral zone. Always a good move to try to soften up the defense on the points. Bengals with a good opportunity there uh, as it was Sardina okay. taking a hard shot from the mid slot, just missed wide. 
Bengals now with a chance to get a loose puck in the high slot area. Comes slowly through the air in front of the crease. Sardina just able to settle that one down as it was defense. Danae pinching in from his point position. Good defense then on the other side by the Georgia Bulldogs and ends up leading to a rush up ice. Shot is taken there as Daniel Crawford let a hard one go. Look, kind of rolled on him before he let it go, though, and went wide. Sardino now with a chance to counter. A nice play there as he gloved it out of the air and then found possession. Tries to dance around the defenseman right there. Eventually it's settled down by Campbell, and he gets a pass up ice. Second pass is connected on, but the Bengals create a turnover. And now moving up ice is Trevor Gutman for the Georgia Bulldogs. Just gets gains the red line and dumps it in. Bengals should have plenty of room here to move it up ice as Georgia's making a change. Here we go. Two on two setting up here for Guerrero, bringing it into the zone. Takes a shot from well outside of the... Uh, Top of the circles, pretty easy one there for Newbold to handle with the glove hand. Makes the save and holds on for a whistle. 12-33 now remaining in period number one. It's a 1-0 lead for Georgia. And there is the possession response we knew the Bengals were going to give eventually right there. Um, you know, just getting some shots on goal, winning puck battles, and controlling the loose pucks as well. They weren't doing that earlier. They had a great shift right there where they were getting those, winning those puck battles and those loose pucks. Stan Schuessy letting a shot go from the point. That one was difficult to handle for Newbold. I'm not sure he knew he made the save originally. Found that rebound eventually, though, covered it up so that there was no second chance for the Bengals. But nice little pushback here so far from Buff State. Bit of a response after that first Georgia goal. Yeah, good to see the Bengals not be knocked back on their heels. Georgia got a bounce after a great shift. Bengals looking to respond before hanging their hex. Another yeah. Yeah, face-off one there. Shot right in on goal from Ryan Hahn. Save made by Newbold, but the Bengals keep that four-check pressure going with Guerrera and Gosen down low. Comes out towards the boards, and now moving it up ice is going to be Punzenberger. Connects on a pass in the neutral zone, dumped in by McDonald. McDonald chasing in after it himself. Gets knocked down on the play by Ryan Hahn, but no penalty called. Might have got away with a trip there, but I couldn't tell. Couldn't it tell was, it was borderline. I was looking for the referee to put his arm up, but it didn't happen. McDonald, though, with a chance in front wow. as he got that pass right along the hash marks. His shot just doinked off the post there, and this one came right back into A.J. White. We saw that last week against say. UB. That was uh, reminiscent of one of the goals that they scored against A.J. White last week. This time he was able to find control of that rebound after it hit him and cover that one up to make sure it didn't end up in a dangerous spot. So he covers up 11.47 now to go here in the period. And looks like A.J.'s got a little bit of work to do on his equipment before we get set for this uh, faceoff from the near dot. Yeah, and again, I couldn't tell from here. I heard the doink, but then the puck landed in front of AJ. That's a fortunate bounce. Um, that the bank, that's fortunate the puck came out instead of in right there because you don't want to go down 2 nothing to this Georgia team the way they can apply pressure. Georgia winning the faceoff, but uh, looked like they were ready for that stretch pass as the other defenseman was retreating into the neutral zone. Wasn't ready for that D to D pass, but they regroup in the neutral zone and send it back across the Buff State blue line. Bengals, though, find possession, and now here comes Gallivan. Gallivan sidestepping men in the neutral zone, dumping it in just wide of the net. Soften it. And now it's going to be Elliott Hunt trying to put some pressure on the defenseman there. Just soft yep. pressure here from the Bengals. Not uh, over committing in the offensive zone, but it does create a little bit of room for Georgia to work that puck up ice. Finally, it is fed off the neutral zone glass, and now Cole Newman just sends it right back into the Georgia zone, right between the legs of the defenseman, so a little bit of opportunity for a forecheck from Gallivan. Gallivan tries to spin a pass in front, loses control of it, and then gets it back. It comes out in front of the net, but a Georgia player finding control of it. Now moving it up ice, Daniel Bardo unable to get it out of the zone. <laughs> Elliott Hunt with the redirection out of midair. That was a perfectly oh. redirected shot there from about hip height. There would have been some great, arguing on that. Great save from Newbold to keep an eye on that one. That was a very difficult shot to track as uh, it was a nicely done deflection and a good chance at the other end for Georgia as they look to counter in transition. A.J. White covering up for making another save and holding on for a whistle. So 10.42 now to go in the period. The end-to-end -end action continuing here between Buff State and Georgia. And uh, Aaron good knows pace. I love it. Great pace so far. Aaron knows. These are the, this is the kind of hockey I get up for, and this is what I needed for my first game. And like we're, get, we're getting a lot of it. We're getting some hits. We're getting saves. We're getting chances. We're getting all of it. And we haven't heard a lot from Miller yet. I don't anticipate that continuing much longer. He's out there on the ice right now. His line mate Sardina trying to get that pass in front. It comes across to Jankowski. Jankowski gets it behind the net to Sardina. He gets pinned against the Zamboni door. Now two players from each side there in that battle for a loose puck. See who eventually comes out of that pile with it. Ref's yelling at him to move it. Eventually he's going to blow it dead. We'll see if he's going to blow it dead because that puck doesn't seem to be moving. It's I don't have an eye on it. Ref. Blow it. There it goes. Looks like all 12 players on the ice are content to see that whistle blown. Eventually it does get blown. Halting play there with 10.08 now to go in the period. And we'll get a face-off inside the Georgia zone. 
Uh, so yeah, so it is possible for this puck to stop moving at least for a second in this game. So we we answered that question, but now uh, Buffalo Buff State, you know, they're they're going to get a, they're going to get an offensive zone faceoff, and they've got the line that's been doing a lot of the legwork offensively with the forecheck out there right now. And we talked about how there were a number of players out of the lineup last week for the Bengals. This was the line that stayed together from the game against Brockport. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they continue some of the chemistry that they've built in the first two games as uh, Sardina had goals in game one and game two. So you know that they've already been productive and they were really against UB. They were the only effective line for Buff State. Yep, and again, Coach Turner knows these guys have been on the same team. This is everybody on this team on that forward line was on the team last year. They are familiar with each other, and again, Coach Turner, Coach Shevchek, and Coach Krebs, they're not about to fix what isn't broken right now, and it looks like he's going to lean on this line to finish out this period. Even Actually, no, nope, we're halfway through it, but he's going to lean on this line. Shot taken right away off that faceoff. Georgia winning another one cleanly there in the Buff State defensive zone. Bengals though finding possession. They get that puck uh -huh. off ice. Now it's Sardina into the offensive zone. Slows down and looks for a pass. Takes a shot on goal. There was a rebound there briefly, but cleared off to the side by a Georgia defenseman. Georgia now finding possession. The Bulldogs come through the neutral zone. Softly dumped into the near corner. And now putting on some pressure is Declan Conway. Conway comes out of the corner with the puck against two different Buff State players. Now he's circling back towards the point. Cross ice pass, finds a defenseman. Now a pass in front, shot in on goal and a save made by A.J. White. Almost a second opportunity there as the Georgia player just had a little bit of difficulty settling, at that down, settling the puck down for a second chance. Conway again finding it here in the neutral zone, making sure it gets back in across the blue line. He heads off for a change as one Georgia player down low putting pressure on the Bengals' defense, but doing a good job of uh, having an effective forecheck as now that their second player has joined the fray. Bengals trying to sneak a change here in the that defensive was, zone. That was a dangerous one, but they get away with it. That goes from dangerous to heady because the puck didn't move. I like it. I like the risk. Shot eventually taken as the puck finally got dislodged from against the, near, the far boards. But it's going to be Georgia keeping it moving here in the offensive zone. Down low, that is Crawford trying to create a little bit of pressure on Ryan Hahn, but Hahn gets the puck away from him, gets it into the neutral zone, tries to find Mendick with that one, but it's just barely off sides on the zone entry, and the linesman blows the play dead, so we have a stoppage in play and a neutral zone draw coming up with 8.26 to go in period number one. Our coverage is brought to you by Militello Realty, Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker. To buy, sell, or lease any office, industrial, retail, or investment property, Trust the unparalleled knowledge and experience of Militello Realty. Oh, Stutz got dropped by his own guy right there. A little bit of miscommunication there in the neutral zone as Stotes and Hager run into each other. That allows Georgia to get into the offensive zone. This is Everly setting it up down low. Oh. Takes a hit there from behind. A good hard hit by Stotes. And it comes back to the Georgia point. Kept in there at the far point. Now Georgia camping out in the offensive zone. Crawford cycles it down low. He's got Everly there. The two of them play catch with it. Shot from a tough angle. Doesn't quite get to the net. Don't. Bengals eventually get a chance to clear that one. Not going to be far enough for icing as Leighton Poole heads back for it for Georgia. Gets that pass up ice. And Georgia with a very clean exit right there. Good, good effective passing as Campbell brings it into the offensive zone. Had a little bit oh, of a lane there. Just couldn't, quite, just couldn't quite get that shot off. He had a, enough space there to take that shot from the mid slot, just kind of lost control of it before he could do so. He was going to rip that thing too. There was going to be a lot behind that shot. He had the entire rink to wind that thing up. Looks like the thing just got stuck on him. Redes was about to let it go. Bengals move it back down ice and now look to set up in the offensive zone themselves. Comes back to the point. Denae lets a quick shot go. It hits a body and then goes to the far corner. Alex Gosen finds it there. His pass, though, intercepted. This could be some numbers for Georgia. They like to make a change, though, and just no, dump it not. in. Man. Physical hit there as it was Denae laying the shoulder into his man. Punzenberger moving through the neutral zone. Good to see that physical brand of hockey picking up here. And the hair. And now we get the two-on-two two coming into the offensive oh. zone as Crapsy just wasn't quite looking for that pass from Guerrera as that uh, charge-up ice was foiled there just by the uh, errant pass right inside the blue line. If that happens again, Crapsy's going to wire it. He was just expecting Guerrera to let that shot go, and I don't blame him, but he'll be ready for the pass next time. Guerrera finding control of a loose puck there on the far boards. Gets it to the point, but not out. Georgia keeping it in. Crapsy, though, helping out, carrying it across the blue line, now through the neutral zone. Crapsy gains the blue line, lets a shot go. Stick saved by Newbold. 
Yep. And they're going to call that play dead as it hit the uh, overhang there behind the Georgia goal. See that come into effect here in the Buffalo State Ice Arena from time to time. Those walkways behind the two goals have a little bit of a lip that overhangs the rink. So you will see uh, some pucks hit the cement there and uh, come out back into play in strange angles. Obviously, in this case, they just blow the play dead. And we have a faceoff here in the offensive zone for the Bengals, but Georgia winning that draw. After winning the draw, they quickly move it up ice. This is Spicer carrying it across the blue line. Softly dumps it into the far corner and puts some pressure on himself. One-on-one -on -one battle for a loose puck. Spicer joining it and finding control of it. Now he has it against the near boards. Joe Lutempio on him. Spicer then intercepts a pass, drives it in towards the nut, just goes straight through the crease and uh, ended up hitting A.J. White in the pad, and then the net comes off the moorings in the process. So we get a, another whistle, another faceoff coming up in the Bengals' defensive zone. 5.56 now to go in this first period. It's a 1-0 Georgia lead still as they got that goal early on in period number one, right about five minutes in, and it was number 17, the starting left winger in tonight's lineup, Matt Begda, getting the game's first goal. Buffalo State has done a really nice job lately. they got to do a little better of getting the puck out of their zone, but they're doing a much better job of collapsing around the net when Georgia gets the puck down low. Georgia's trying to operate from below the goal line and up uh, the Gretzky's office line where they try to run their offense from behind the goal line to set up the perfect play. Buffalo State got burned on it for that first goal. They got out of possession. Their defensemen are doing a really good job of staying right by the goal line, being aware of where the post is, and the point men have nothing to shoot at now, so everything's got to go from the goal line down. And we talked about this uh, in week one where defensive zone coverage was an issue against Brockport. We'll keep watching that tonight as the Bengals quickly get that one up ice. Galvin tries to get it out in front to Hunt. Pat Puck ends up in the skates of a Georgia defenseman, doesn't end up getting to Hunt. And now the, and the Bulldogs come back three on two. Moving wide and trying to get that pass out in front. Did eventually get out in front, but was unable to connect as Gannon was trying to set up something. He's got the puck on his stick here again in the slot. That's a hard shot go. Maybe had too much time to think about that one and missed the net wide. Ryan Hahn with an eye on his man there on the far side. A little bit of a late hit, but the shot comes in from the point. Goes just wide, and now Spicer looks to settle it down here on the near side and keep that forecheck pressure going. George has been very effective here in the first period and putting a lot of pressure on the Buff State defenseman and creating some turnovers in the offensive zone. Yeah, and forcing mistakes like that as well. As Latempio saw three guys coming to pop him, so we tried to clear it down, hit it a little too hard and got icing. Now, I just was just saying how well the Buffalo State defense had been of staying around the net to keep the area clean. They got away from it right there, and at two or three chances, A.J. White either had to make a save or Georgia, you know, fortunately for the Bengals, couldn't get the shot up, but the Bengals really got to just stop the defensemen really have to wait till that puck is out before they try to join the rush or they're going to get crushed tonight. Yeah, so that icing ends up uh, keeping a Buff State line out there on the ice for a little bit extra time. Unfortunately for Georgia's perspective, they can't connect on a couple of passes there along the blue line. Now Buff State's going to get a chance to make the change they were looking to do right there before the icing. Georgia has it here in the offensive zone, but Ryan Hahn gets in the way of a pass. It allows the Bengals to clear it out of the zone, but Georgia looking to come right back in with Matt Bigda. Bigda dumps it in and wraps it around behind the boards, behind the net. And now Jankowski tries to get it out on the far side. Two different efforts at it. Doesn't get it past the Georgia defenseman. And eventually that shot comes in from well out on the perimeter. No real issue for A.J. White to handle that one. Just covers up for another whistle. Makes sure that the full line change gets completed here for the Bengals. 424 now remaining here in period number one. Little bit of sloppy play is plaguing the Bengals right now. No surprise to see Turner leaning on Old Reliable right now with the Sardina line. Looking to calm things down. But they do lose the faceoff right there. And never mind. You create a loose puck. Jankowski gets it up to Sardina. And now Sardina in across the blue line with some speed. Sardina tries to get a backhand from a tough angle. That one goes wide. But Ryan Miller has it here in the near boards. Takes a hit. And that allows Georgia to find possession. Big to just clears it to the far boards in the neutral zone. And now Dene looks to get it back up ice for Buff State. His pass gets intercepted. Now two on two for Georgia. Pass comes right in front of the net. Almost a very nice play in tight there as it was Bigda and Conway looking to set up a little quick pass in front. Just not quite connected on. Almost half a step slower, and that one's a really good scoring opportunity for Georgia. But again, they are uh, finding time in the offensive zone and creating opportunities. And I also want to shout out uh, Leighton Poole right there. It's not often... You can see a defenseman go from the back pedal to the crossover and be stride for stride with Brett Sardine and not lose an inch. That was some great man-on-man -man defense right there to stop that rush. Georgia again getting control of the puck right off of a faceoff, and they keep it going here in the offensive zone. Everly sliding it down low. 
Got a man below the goal line. Crawford trying to skate it there behind the net. Eventually connects on a pass, and now a shot's taken from the faceoff down on the far side. Looked like A.J. White got a piece of that one, but it's going to be still going here in the offensive zone for Georgia. Circling the net, getting it back to the point is Parente. Shot taken from the midpoint, gets deflected wide, but it's again Georgia with possession of it. Gutman getting it back to his point man. Shot is then taken from the midpoint again. A big slap shot taken by Parente. That one gets deflected and goes wide. Bengals are going to have to find a little bit more possession and settle things down here just to get that puck up out of the zone. Uh, that might work. This might work out as the uh, Georgia player ends up gloving it to Miller. Miller now in across nice. the blue okay. line. Toe drag and a shot there in on goal. Nice save made. Bengals are going to get a power play out of this, it looks like, as the referee's arms up here in the Georgia zone. Oh, he iced it. I can't believe he just uh, did that. Buff State just dumps it in and gives possession right back to Georgia, so they're unable to take advantage of uh, getting A.J. White out of the net and an extra attacker out there. But they do get the power play coming up and uh, 2.53 left to go in the period. Nice opportunity to end the period on a positive note here for the Bengals as uh, I would say a lot of this period has been played uh, they, more in the Bengals defensive oh, zone. They're getting the offensive zone face off. They didn't call that icing. No, they did. Well, they did get a little bit of... Oh, wait, no, wait, it's a delayed there. penalty, so it doesn't matter. That's the thing. It's going to be an offensive zone face off no matter what. It's a delayed penalty. Correct. Right? So we get the... Uh, well, that's how I'm going with it. Either way, the faceoff's here to the left of Newbold in the offensive zone for the Bengals. And it's another faceoff won by the Georgia Bulldogs, and they quickly send it back down the ice. Georgia penalty to number two, David Eberly. Two minutes for elbowing. Eberly, two minutes for elbowing. Time of the penalty, 17.07. Bengals get a turnover here in the offensive zone. Gallivan with a backhand, two opportunities in tight. Good saves made there by Newbold as he was tested after that puck was turned over in his defensive zone. Bengals now with a chance to set it up. Sardine at the top of the circle. Shot taken from there. It looked like it hit Elliott Hunt in front of the net. Not sure it got all the way to Newbold. Comes back to the near corner. Hunt settles it down there. Bengals still with plenty of time here on this power play. A minute 15 remaining as it comes back to the point. Nice play by Sardina to keep it in. Can't get it away from the uh, penalty killer, though. Great play there by Robert Whitwer to create that loose puck and get it through the neutral zone. Bengals then don't connect on that pass there along the Georgia blue line, so that one's going to go for an icing call against Buff State. A little bit of uh, uneven uh, start or middle part of the power play. Looked like they had it set up there nicely in the offensive zone. Couldn't really generate too much from it. And then that next charge up ice ends up being negated by an errant pass and an icing against the Bengals. So a minute two still to go in the power play. I still like what I see from the Bengals. They're getting that possession. The looks are there. They just got to start. They got to not blow the puck into the shin guards of the Bulldogs because these guys are fast. If they get out in transition, they're going to get you. Bengals win Perfect. control of the faceoff. And now Galvin's going to slowly settle it down behind his own goal just line go. and look to carry this one up ice. 50 seconds now remaining in the power play. This is not a – I mean – the Bengals, this is the Shea should feast on this when Georgia sends a four checker on their power play. That should be a free breakout for them. Eventually, they do get it up to Hunt. Hunt just dumps it in from his spot here in the neutral zone. And now it's Ben Galvin there on the far side setting up the power play. Back to Guerrero against the far boards. Cross ice pass wow. ends up going into the net off the defenseman. Made a good read to keep that pass from getting across. Unfortunately, though, ends up deflecting right off of his stick and into the net. And that's how the Bengals are going to tie this one up. A little bit of a fluky power play goal, but it's going to go to number three, Michael Guerrera. And that's exactly what the Bengals needed to get tied back up here in this game. It's now a 1-1 game as the Bengals score on the power play. Well, they don't ask how. They ask how many right there. Again, possession by the Bengals. Get the puck down low. Guerrera tries to snap a pass. Back door. We know how hard Guerrero can make that puck move, and it hits the blade square and goes right under the bar, and the Bengals get the game tied with the last minute, new two minutes of the second period, first period. Bengals look to uh, continue that push into the offensive zone after getting that goal. Georgia, though, coming back in the other direction in a hurry of themselves. That pass doesn't connect, and now an opportunity for Stotes to get it out against the near boards. Slowly through the neutral zone, Stotes now putting some pressure on the defenseman here in the offensive zone. Creates a loose puck, but picking it up is Jack Gannon. He's got plenty of room to work with here as Georgia now moves it through the neutral zone. Pass doesn't connect, though, as Buff State is enabled to send it back into Georgia's zone. And from there, the Bulldogs are going to have to set up their breakout again. Now 40 seconds remaining in period number one. Gannon stops and starts behind his own net before he connects a on a pass up ice. A second pass, and now Georgia 2-on-1 into the offensive zone. Pass comes across. That one gets deflected on its way through. It looked like similar play to what just happened on the other end of the ice. This time it ends up being deflected wide. 
And uh, Bengals dodge a little bit of a bullet there as that was a pretty quickly developing two-on-one against them. Three guys went for the hit and miss. You can't do that. You got to stop the puck before you try to blow the guy up. Last 15 seconds of the period as the Bengals look to escape their zone. A little bit of a beneficial bounce there over at Georgia Stick. Allowed that one to come into the neutral zone. Still five seconds in the period. One last opportunity for Leighton Poole to set something up here in the offensive zone. Pass comes out in front. Mark Hager clears it to the point, and that's how period number one will end. And it's a 1-1 score after 20 minutes of play. An entertaining first period. Not a whole lot of whistles there in period number one. Georgia getting the game's first goal. Buffalo State answering there late in the period with a power play goal. Absolutely great period in terms of entertainment, good hockey, clean period too. I mean, granted, Mike Guerrero had said something to the Georgia bench after the goal, but that's also hockey. And uh, we have a tie game with two, you know, two powerful teams at this level of college hockey, and we got what we wanted. Speed, saves, some hits, goals, a weird goal. Those are always fun. So, yeah, I mean, nothing to be – nothing to – no, we're not getting robbed of anything tonight. Certainly not a lot of downtime either. It's a game that has been uh, moving in a hurry right from the opening whistle as uh, first period was done in a blink of an eye, it seemed. It's a 1-1 score after 20 minutes of play. We'll have both teams now head back to their locker rooms for the first intermission, see what sort of adjustments both teams can make as they get ready for period number two. Support for Buffalo State Club Hockey comes from Militello Realty, Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker. Our coverage also brought to you by Ivy Lee Pharmacy, a locally owned neighborhood pharmacy for over 60 years. Ivy Lee can cover your immunization needs from flu shots to the newest COVID vaccine. Also CBD products, home health care, and all of your other pharmacy needs. Ivy Lee Pharmacy, 2446 Elmwood Avenue in Kenmore or ivyleepharmacy.com. This broadcast also brought to you by Pool Mart, your family fun store. Whether you're looking for a pool, hot tub, patio furniture, supplies, or more, Pool Mart has five locations across Western New York and Northern Pennsylvania to meet your specific need. Find them online at poolmartonline.com. Supporters also include Colvin Cleaners, dry cleaning, wash and fold, tailoring, and all garment services. Colvin Cleaners is the region's premier green earth dry cleaner. It's also where the Buffalo State College Club hockey team goes to keep their uniforms the sharpest in the league. ColvinCleaners.com or visit them on Elmwood Avenue in Kenmore. Supporters also include Envious Gamewear, the official uniform provider of the Buffalo State Club hockey team. Find them online, enviousgamewear.com. And by 412 Communications, the new gold standard for digital media solutions for small businesses. 412 Communications offers consultation for web and graphic design, social media, writing and editing services, multimedia solutions, and much, much more. Visit 412communications.com to learn how they can help your brand build bridges with the people you serve. You're watching Buffalo State College Club Hockey on the Nickel City Hockey Network, Western New York's new broadcast home for amateur hockey. We're going to step away here for the first intermission, but we'll be back in about 10 minutes for period number two.
State College Club Hockey is sponsored by Ivy Lee Pharmacy, a locally owned neighborhood pharmacy in Kenmore for over 60 years. By Militello Realty, Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker. By Pool Mart, for any pool, hot tub, or patio need, Pool Mart is your fun store. By 412 Communications, the new gold standard for small business digital media solutions. By Envious Gameware, designers of high-end custom hockey uniforms, bags, and apparel, and the official uniform provider of Buffalo State College Club Hockey. And by Colvin Cleaners. For dry cleaning, wash and fold, tailoring, and more, Colvin Cleaners is who the Bengals trust to keep their uniforms the sharpest in the league. This is the Nickel City Hockey Network, Western New York's new broadcast home for college, high school, and junior hockey.
And welcome back to the Buffalo State Ice Arena as we get ready for period number two between the University of Georgia and Buffalo State College. A 1-1 game after 20 minutes of play. Georgia getting on the board first about five minutes into the action. And uh, it was Buffalo State then answering on the power play, getting a little bit of a fluky goal, but uh, they count just the same. Each of them count for one. Matt Begda getting on the board for the Georgia Bulldogs. Michael Guerrero getting on the board for the Buffalo State Bengals, and that's our 1-1 score after 20 minutes of play. Good evening. I'm Aaron Elprin alongside Sean McHugh for the call of tonight's game. And, Sean, it was a uh, fast start from the Georgia perspective, really a fast start to the game in general as both teams really came out flying right at the beginning. Yeah, both teams had their legs going with them, but Georgia got the goal early. But Buffalo State, minus a few possessions here and there where they got pinned a little bit, answered the bell perfectly. We're getting shots. You know, we're making plays. We're playing physical. We're not in awe of a team that is a top five team. Eventually got their power play and some great work by Ryan Miller and Michael Guerrero, and then eventually getting the lucky bounce. That ends up in the net. But I don't ask any, any hockey player that's playing in a hockey game. You don't care how it goes in as long as it goes in. And he was, uh, it, it looked like it was a pretty good setup play there in front of the net. There was a guy on the back door. Oh, it was yeah. a good defensive play. It's kind of unfortunate that it ended up going that way for uh, number 48, Nathaniel Guinard. He was in the right place, made the right play. It just unfortunately took a wrong bounce off of his stick and ended up behind his goaltender. He did make the right play because if that puck gets to where it's going, it's a goal. Yeah, exactly. It was He, he made the play he had to to keep it from being a tap-in on the back door. It just He just ended up tapping it in himself. We're underway here in period number two as the Bengals try to find possession of the puck in their own zone. Ryan Hahn gets that one out into the neutral zone. Ben Gallivan's got it here. Maybe a two-on-one setting up. Gallivan takes the shot himself and gets through got the goaltender through but goes just wide and into the back of the net. Referee blows the play dead as Ben Galvin starting to get his stride in this game. We've seen him a couple of times with the puck on his stick moving into the offensive zone. Georgia's going to have to make sure they mark number eight for the rest of this contest. Uh, that's unfortunate, too, because Galvin had to take those two strides to find the puck in his skates. He was able to get it clean. He easily could have got that pass over to Elliott Hunt for a tap-in, but because he didn't gather it until he was below the dot. That's the second wow. time a puck has ended up almost in the exact same seat in the bleachers below us to the left. First time the uh, guy that almost got hit with it wasn't looking. This nice time it throw. seems that the uh, the fans were on top of it and uh, quickly thrown back into play by the uh, fan to our left here. So we're ready to uh, get going again. Bengals going to get an offensive zone draw. Georgia, though, winning control of it off the faceoff. Puck comes up towards the point. Georgia exits the zone. Now they look to move it into the offensive end. This is the goal scorer, Big Do, with the puck on his stick. But Ben Galvin takes it away from him and now looks to move it up ice for the Bengals. Galvin gets it past one defenseman, but it's going to be the uh, Georgia Bulldog player picking it up at his own blue line. Bulldogs now in across the Buff State blue line, looking to put some pressure on Big to here in the corner, battling with Ryan Hahn. Both Buff State defensemen in there trying to find control of that loose puck, but it's going to be Georgia coming out of the pile with it. And here against the boards, it's Declan Conway. Just spins it down low, eventually settled down behind the net. And now it's going to be Conway getting it to Bigda. A couple of bodies collide there. Mazzaro's almost with a chance there in the backhand, but it comes out to Elliott Hunt. He makes sure that zone gets cleared. Goes cross ice with it to avoid any icing on the play. Now uh, Bengals looking to set up some defense here in the neutral zone. Oh, almost got like. burned in the process there as two Georgia players ended up behind the defense. Almost get a good opportunity there from the uh, bounce off the backboards too as Crawford had a chance from along the goal line. Crawford has it now here just below the goal line, tries to get that pass out in front as we saw them go from below the goal line out in front of the net a bunch in the first period, again looking to set up that play right there. Ends up forcing an icing against the Bengals, so we're going to have a faceoff coming back into Buffalo State territory. 18-17 now remaining in the period, and uh, Bengals now looking to take advantage of this offensive zone opportunity. Yep, absolutely. absolutely. Bengals really, really had to gather some, um, gather some possession and momentum right now. Georgia's had the bulk of it. For the start of this period, we're about two minutes in. No, no crazy high danger scoring chances, but the Bengals got burned early in the first by not being able to get possession, getting worked down, ground to a powder, and then Georgia ended up getting a tap in. Buff State ends up getting possession off of this face off. They get the zone clear, and it's slow enough into the oh, offensive geez. zone not to be an icing. Kind of a dangerous looking collision there as the Georgia player ended up kind of going down towards the ice as he collided with Elliott Hunt. Fortunately, both players get up. Don't seem to be too much worse for wear. Bengals have to clear the zone here to avoid an offsides, and that gives Georgia plenty of room to move the puck up ice. And now they're looking to get it across the blue line with Trevor Gutman. Gutman lets a hard wrist shot go, trying to use Cole Newman as a screen. Looks like A.J. White had a pretty good read on that one. Makes the save with the glove hand, holds on for a whistle. 
And faceoff coming up to his uh, left coming up here with 17.43 to go in the second period. Yep, and Buff State doing a better job of getting out of their own end that time. Crazy looking fall slash collision between Elliott Hunt and the Georgia defenseman. Luckily, no one comes out of there with any injuries, and the Bengals looking to get some possession now. Bengals looking to get that stretch play right off the faceoff again. Pass didn't quite connect, but it's uh, certainly something it's there. I think. Yeah, Georgia's going to have to keep an eye on that. That was just uh, one Georgia defenseman away from connecting in the neutral zone as Ryan Miller is moving out of the zone in a hurry. Ooh. Bengals there with a chance in front as Sardina spun and let a backhand shot in on goal. Good save there by Newbold to make sure this one stays a 1-1 game. Georgia now back in the opposite direction themselves as they set up some offensive pressure in the far corner. Nice play there by Mitch Thornton to evade some of that pressure and get the puck up ice. Kept in here at the point by Leighton Poole, however. Comes out, though, and now it's a chance for the Bengals to get it up ice. Miller into the offensive zone. Has a step there to let a shot go. Defenseman has given him plenty of room there. Got him. And then he ends up taking a stick up high in oh, the, as he's heading he's, in there for a uh, rebound. Oh, he sold that, too. Uh, Miller tends to sell some of those. I'm, I, oh, he got his knack. No, maybe he's not. I mean, I'm not making fun of him. I'm saying he felt that's what you're taught. You feel a stick up high drop. I think he might have got, I think he might have got, I don't know, who's the guy from Napoleon Dynamite, the karate guy? I think he got that in the neck right there. Well, whatever happened, I think he Rex drew a Bondo. penalty out of it because that the, the referee was quick to signal the uh, high-sticking penalty, and so the Bengals are going to go on the power play here as now uh, we're a little bit more than three minutes into the second period, and the Bengals get another chance on the power play. They scored a power play goal in period number one. See whether or not they can get that power play set up here again in the second. Bengals win this face off and look to set up that power play, but a good defensive play in that near corner to make sure that, uh, that Georgia got at least it out into the neutral zone where Ryan Hahn had to pick it up before sending it back up towards the blue line. Sardina has it just inside the blue line now. Gets it to Elliott Hunt. Now the Bengals have a chance to slow it down and get their setup in place. Pass doesn't connect, though, as Georgia's going to get a chance to clear, and they do so with a minute 33 now remaining in the uh, Buffalo, oh, no. State, Buffalo State power play. A little bit of a dangerous play there as A.J. White had to be quick with that one and make sure he got it up to Gallivan. Ooh. Georgia penalty to number 13, Charles Campbell. Two minutes for high sticking. Campbell, two minutes for high sticking. Time of the penalty, 3.04. Puck is covered up by Newbold, and so a uh, couple of changes being made here. Georgia putting uh, some new players out there to kill off the last minute 19 of this penalty. Same five out there for Buff State. Georgia winning the faceoff, trying to get that zone clearance, but a uh, good play by Ryan Hahn to hold that point here at the left point. Now the Bengals finding a loose puck along the goal line. Sardina walks it in. Wow. Up top under the bar. Brett Sardina makes it 2-1 with a laser of a snapshot. I don't think Newbold was expecting him to put it there, but he sure did. It's 2-1 Buff State. That was just outstanding skill right there by Brett Sardina, telling the Georgia Bulldogs to just quiet down a little bit right there. Just gets the puck. Everybody, including Newbold, drops down to take away the pass. And Sardina just flips it right under the bar. And Buff State gets a two gets a two to one lead. And that's exactly what they needed going into the second period. So the Bengals taking advantage of both of their power plays here today. This time it's a much cleaner version of it. And it's Brett Sardina picking up his third goal of the season and making this one a 2-1 lead for Buff State. Now we get to see how the Bengals play with a lead here in this game as uh, it was Georgia taking the lead early on. Now the Bengals with a chance to see what uh, playing from ahead feels like in this one. Oh, well, they're going to get tested. 2-1-1 on one, maybe setting up here for Georgia. Shot is taken after he sets up the pass nicely, but a good save by A.J. White to stick with the shooter as it looked like uh, everybody in the building was expecting the pass. Defenseman slid to block the pass, and the shot came in on goal. Good save by A.J. White keeping this one a 2-1 game, but a nice response there from Georgia. I would expect nothing less. So the face-off to the right of A.J. White here with 15-34 remaining. Bengals a little bit slow here with the change as Joe Lotempio late coming into the fray. Second Buffalo State goal, his third of the season, scored by number 53, Brett Sardina. Assist to number nine, Elliot Hunt, and number eight, Ben Gallivan. Sardina's third from Hunt and Gallivan. Time of the Bengals power play goal, 3.58. And Georgia with the immediate answer. A scramble in front of the net. Puck ends up coming out in front to Bardo, and he puts it home on the backhand. Georgia getting the response. It's a 2-2 hockey game, as this one is going to continue to go back and forth, it seems, Sean. 
Yeah, back and forth we go. And after they were told to be quiet, the Georgia bench and their fans, and they brought a lot of them to this game, they get a little bit louder. So now the animosity is starting to brew. And back and forth we go, and the fun's about to begin. Like any hockey game, once the uh, energy starts to ramp up, it starts to get just a little bit more interesting. This is uh, one of those types of games where they were feeling each other out for about the first, most of the first period, and now it seems that uh, they've managed to find a little bit of bad blood here in period number two. It's a 2-2 hockey game as the teams have just traded goals here in the last couple minutes. Yep, and Georgia coming right down early with some four-check pressure, trying to get another one. I expect Buff State to start leaning on the physical game because they do have the advantage in that department in this game. But Georgia keeping it in here from the point. Gannon walking it in, just drops a pass there. Now it comes back to the point where Everly sets it up. Georgia with a good bit of zone time here right now, but Denae out from his point, out, out to the point to play a little bit of defense. That allows the Bengals to get a clear, get that puck into the neutral zone. Second Georgia goal scored by number 24, Daniel Barto. Assist to number 14, Robert Whitwer, and number five, Dylan Spicer. Barto from Whitwer and Spicer, time of the Georgia goal, 4.57. Georgia again looking to set up that low to high play as they had a guy down low below the goal line, feeding a man in front of the net. A.J. White making a stop on that play. Again, Bengals are going to have to kind of keep an eye on that in the defensive zone as they watch their defensive coverage. Georgia certainly looking to set up those plays from below the goal line and get it out in front quickly. That's how they got their first goal. And they've been effective at it all night, too. That's how they're getting possession. It's how they're wearing on this Buffalo State D. They're just pushing it back and forth and forcing them to go on their edges from the crease down to the wall, up and down. And that's just how you just wear on a guy's legs. Don't hit him. Okay. It's a little bit of a beneficial offsides there from a Buff State perspective. They were uh, making a late change and I think at least had one player that was going to be struggling to get back into that play. George ends up going offsides. And uh, the numbers advantage they might have had going into the offensive zone goes by the wayside there, but we'll have a neutral zone draw right in front of the Georgia bench. 13:43 remaining here in the second period. Well, it's been a uh, very entertaining contest so far. Oh, yeah. I mean, everything you could have wanted, we're getting. And I think the hits are going to start coming now, too. And once that bad blood and the chirping starts, you know the physicality is going to pick up as well. Georgia almost connecting there with a the pass in front of the net, but the Bengals countering quickly in the other direction. Stotes into the offensive zone. Stops along the goal line. Tries to get that pass to Sardina. Eventually does. Now the two of them battle against two Georgia players in the near corner. Georgia, though, coming out with it, moving it up ice. And now through the neutral zone, it's Declan Conway. Conway cuts in towards the center of the ice. Let's a shot go off the left pad of A.J. White. Rebound isn't cleared out of the way by the Bengals defenseman. And that ends up being a glorious opportunity. And it's Charles Campbell that puts it home. It's a 3-2 Georgia lead right now as the Bengals unable to clear that rebound out from in front of the net and Georgia taking advantage. You can't have that if you're Buffalo State, just bottom line. I don't care what you have to do, that can't happen. You have a chance to clear the puck in front of your own net and you straight dust it like that and you serve it up on a platter to a top five team. That, that's gonna end up in the back of your net every single time. The Bengals have to get back to what they were doing, what was working defensively, collapsing, worrying about getting the puck out before trying to go up ice because this Georgia team, this is one of the teams that can match them with speed. If you get caught leaving the zone early, that is what's going to happen every time. Might be having that speed to their benefit here as Bigda got behind Ryan Hahn there. Almost got that pass out in front to Conway just a little bit off the mark. Bengals though with some room to move it up ice. This could be a three on two if they're quick with it. Crapsy across the blue line. Good defensive play as he loses control there on the far side. That was Campbell, the most recent goal scorer, doing the work with the stick there to keep that drive up ice for the Bengals from ending up in a scoring opportunity. Shot does come in from the near boards as Crapsy got that one on goal. Now the Bengals set up here in the offensive zone. Stanishewski's shot from the point goes off a body and then goes wide. Now Georgia gets it back out of the zone. Not gonna get there. Sending it back to the Buff State territory. Mm. And ooh, a beneficial icing as that one was crawling towards the Buff State goal line. Did eventually have enough momentum on it to get that icing call. And uh, much to the Buff State benefit, I believe, as uh, now they get that offensive zone draw coming up as uh, now it's a 3-2 hockey game in favor of Georgia. Yeah, you know, Bengals, you know, they're, they were trailing just as quickly as they got their lead back, and they're looking to respond right here. Crafty looking to win the straw bag, loses it clean, but the Bengals, again, just got to get some pressure down low so they can reestablish some zone time. And Georgia's done a nice job of winning faceoffs, especially in their own zone, in both zones. Both ends of the ice, they've done a good job of winning faceoffs. They're perfect in their own end, though. Yeah, in that case, it ends up going for an icing. Is just a little bit too much on that clearing attempt? 
And now the Bengals are getting in an offensive zone draw on the far side of the Georgia zone. Yeah, but they're going to keep the same line out there with Crafty, Gosen, and Guerrero with Thornton and Newman on the back end right there. And again, Guerrero, there it is. There's a win. Shot doesn't get in on net, however. And now a battle for a loose puck against these near boards. Georgia getting it out of the zone. A little bit of physicality continuing there between these two teams. Conway carries it in across the blue line, avoids one hit, still has it. Oh, nice pass looking out in front for Punzenberger, just a shade out of his reach. Crapsy back in the other direction, takes a shot from distance. It goes off bud. the side of the net. Now in behind the goal line, Georgia's going to get a chance to pick up the puck and move it up ice. And they do so, making sure it clears out of the zone. But Mitch Thornton back inside of his own end, stops and starts, and now moves that one up ice. He's got Sardina Ooh. with it. Sardina's got Miller behind the defense, just couldn't quite get it to him as there was a Georgia player in between the two of them. And now Bengals are going to have to clear the zone. That gives Georgia a chance to get it up ice. That was comp That's a terrible penalty there by Mitch That's Thornton. That's just as awful. He as he just laid the hit on the guy I mean, well after the puck was chipped past him. What are you arguing him. about, dude? Go to the box. That was just awful right there. You, you The puck was at your feet and you went for the hit. Like, you, you, you can't do that. So the Bengals hand Georgia here an opportunity on the power play with a bit of a ill-advised bit of physicality by the Bengals defenseman, Mitch Thornton. So it's uh, our first opportunity to see what Georgia can do with the man advantage here based on the way that they've played five on five in the Bengals zone. Yeah. I have to imagine they're going to be able to set up something very nice on the power play. Yeah, I think we're going to need a couple saves out of A.J. White on this one, Aaron. So the interference penalty coming at 8.37 of the period. Georgia again winning that faceoff and setting up their power play here. Up top it's Gannon. Gets it across to Bigda, now across the point to Poole. Good passing already connected on here, but a good block there by Miller. Shot comes in on goal. There's a rebound there, but good play. Settle that one down by Ryan Hahn and send that one the length of the ice. Look at Miller. He's going to win that race. Oh, and he gets oh, driven man. hard into the boards by Gannon. He don't, don't, guys. Thank you. And it looked like there was going to be maybe a little bit of a response, but Miller drawing a second penalty here in this game. And it looks like it's going to be an interference call, so not even 30 seconds into the power play. The Bengals do a good job using their speed to draw a penalty of their own. Ryan Miller learned something this offseason right there. There was a time where he would have gotten up and buried that kid for hitting him. He realized he drew the penalty. He did it. He got rewarded because that was – he kicked it into gear right there, and he won that race, drew the penalty. And I, sorry, dude, but in years past, he would – we know this. He would have gone after him. He didn't right there, and he was smart enough, and the Bengals negated Georgia power play, and yes – that's necessary. I really, really don't want to see this team on a power play with the momentum they already got back in this period. Just that brief little bit where they were set up in the offensive zone Looks with the good. four tic-tac-toe passes across the blue line. I think that's a sample of what they're able to do on the power play. Bengals are going to have to be very careful in terms of the physicality here in this contest. So now with a little bit more than 10 minutes to go in the period, we get to play a little bit of four-on-four -four hockey I'm excited as the about two this. teams uh, exchanged a couple interference penalties there. Poole at the point here for Georgia, lets a shot go, it hits a skate, now comes off the backboards, almost comes right out in front to Whitwer, but eventually it was Ryan Hahn getting the puck off of his stick. Now the two do battle here in the near corner, comes back to the point, Poole walks in from his point position to keep it moving, now he makes a pass back to the point, nice look there, now across cross ice, and Georgia keeping it set up here in the offensive zone. They're scrambling hard right now. This uh, four on four setup seems to be favoring the Georgia Bulldogs so far as they have it set up here on the perimeter. Pass comes back to the point, shot in on goal. As Leighton Poole let that one go. Spicer again finding the rebound, looking to set up that offensive zone time as they basically spent the entirety of this four on four in the Bengals zone. 30 seconds remaining now in four on four. Didn't shoot the puck though, other than that one wide point shot. So I guess the Bengals will take that. I'll take this too. Could end up creating an opportunity as Gallivan carries it in Great across defense. the blue line. Good play there by Leighton Poole to make sure that pass didn't get across Joe Lotempio on the far back door. 15 seconds remaining in four on four as Georgia looks to carry it up ice here. Uh -oh. Pass doesn't connect, but Poole had a little bit of a lane to try to chase it down, ends up going to the bench for a change as the last five seconds tick away to the penalty against Mitch Thornton. Quickly sent back into the Buff State zone right as the Buff State penalty expired, so no icing on that play as that was timed perfectly from the Georgia perspective. This works. This one doesn't work out as well for them, though, as Galvin carries it into the offensive zone with speed. Nice save there by Newbold. But it's going to be Elliott Hunt finding the rebound. Bengals with a chance to set up the power play with 10 seconds to go. Sardina on the far boards. Cuts in towards the slot. Drops a pass into the corner to Hunt. 
hunting around behind the net. He's got Guerrero here against the near boards. Back to the point to Cole Newman, but kind of rolls on him before it gets to him. Ends up going back into the neutral zone, and that'll just about do it for the Georgia penalty. Teams come back to five on five. Guerrero almost had a chance to settle one down and carry that in towards the net. Just couldn't quite get a hold of that puck. Now it comes out to Elliott Hunt. He has a chance to let one go. Had a little bit of difficulty oh. digging out of his skates, though. Almost ends up working out as a nice scoring opportunity for the Bengals. I think that shot ended up going just wide as it was eventually oh, Guerrero back, letting one back. go. Numbers here for Georgia. Good physical play by Cole Newman as that was an all-or-nothing physical attempt right there. If he doesn't get his man off the puck, it's a goal. And oh. it ends up being a golden opportunity in front. And Burnett. I don't know if yeah, Burnett's going to want that one back because he just had all day and a uh, little bit of the evening to let that shot go as he walked in from the right point. Sorry, he just hit AJ White in the shoulder and went up out of play. Sorry, young buck, you took that extra stride. He was planning the fist bump right there. You could see it. I mean, my eyes were getting bigger at all he had to shoot at. So I think it might have rolled on him or what, but he took a sweet time letting that shot go, and the puck ended up hitting the roof. So I guarantee you next time Bennett gets a look, he's going to wire it as soon as it touches his tape. Yeah, another scoring opportunity there that uh, scared us a little bit up here in the scoring in the broadcast booth, but the Bengals end up avoiding anything negative there on the play, and now they get a chance back in the offensive zone as it was Galvin trying to get a pass out in front to Stotes. Georgia clears the zone, almost had some numbers there in the neutral zone. Bouncing puck bounces in the favor of the Bengals, though, but eventually it comes into the Georgia end, Georgia offensive end, that is. Stotes knocks his man off the puck and now tries to start the breakout, but he's got a man quickly on him. Georgia forcing a turnover in the far corner. This is Gutman in the far corner, just cycling it around behind the net. Comes back to the point. Poole unable to keep it in. That's going to give the Bengals a chance to make a change here. They needed that too. Gallivan was at the very, very tail end of that shift. Yeah, Guerrero as well. The two of them have been out there during the power uh -oh. play. Player falls down, and that gives Georgia a chance to carry it pretty cleanly into the Bengals zone. Connect on a pass across the ice, and now here against the near boards. Good hit there by Mendick on his man, Campbell, against the boards, and then the Bengals get it out through the neutral zone, but Georgia again finding possession. This is Leighton Poole circling in front of his goaltender. Floats one through the neutral zone. Gloved down by his man, Everly, but Everly can't get to that loose puck before Ryan Dene could. Dene making sure that one got back out into the neutral zone, but the Bulldogs send it right back in, and Dene has to start it out from behind his own net. Thornton tries to get a pass into the neutral zone just behind Mark Hager, and now Georgia looks to counter. Good hit there as it was Ryan Dene putting a shoulder into his man just inside the blue line, made sure he got him off that puck. A little bit of physicality here from Buff State has uh, come into their benefit here as uh, in the last couple of minutes there have been two different hits that have resulted in good defensive plays. Dene is a player they did not have last year. And, like, literally and figuratively, they did not have a guy Ooh. that, wow, all right. There's one. Who was that? Was Mendic. that Mendick? Wow. Yeah. Mendick throwing the body into his man there. I'm not sure who got the worst of that one, Mendick or Campbell, but it was a big, solid hit right there just inside the Georgia blue line as the physicality continues to ramp up here with a little bit more than six minutes uh -oh. to go. Poole with a step, tries to get it to the forehand, just couldn't quite settle that one down as he was on his backhand originally and that transfer over to the forehand couldn't quite settle it. Sardina for the Bengals looking to go upstairs again on the goaltender, Newbold, this time not high enough, or uh, the glove hand was quick enough on that one. And Newbold having a little bit of a conversation with Ryan Miller in front of the net there. Looks friendly, though. Yeah, it did. It didn't look uh, too much animosity. There. I saved. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I saved. Got to give him credit. I was like, that's a bet. That's, that's, I mean, I know it looked routine, but that puck is coming quick. And I've stood next to it. And the last time he had to deal with the shot from Sardina, <laughs> it was uh, a little bit more difficult to handle. So definitely a good stop Whoa, on that one. speaking of the devil. Ooh, Sardina with a nice redirection right there in front of the net after Ryan Hahn let that shot go. Bengals might have something here in front of the net. Pass just doesn't quite connect as it was uh, Janikowski in front of the net. Just couldn't quite get that pass from Miller. Bengals line doing a good job here setting up some offensive zone time. As we said earlier, this is the one Bengals line that's been together all three games this season. You can tell too. Yeah. It's important. Chemistry matters. I mean, you don't have chemistry, skills worthless. So you're doing a great job developing it on that line, and the other lines appear to be coming together too. Sardina in the near corner, helping out his defenseman to create a loose puck. Stanishewski gets it to Sardina. Now the Bengals look to start it up against the near boards. What a nice play there at the point, as that was Grenard making sure that puck didn't get out, glove that one down, and allowed Georgia to maintain some more offensive zone time. A little bit more than five minutes to go in period number two. It's a 3-2 game with Georgia out in front in this one. And as they look to set up a little nice bit more shot. time here in the offensive zone, there was a crowd of bodies in front of A.J. White there. Shot was let go. 
AJ managed to see that one through traffic or it just kind of hit him in a good position there in front of the net. Either way, he covered that one up, held on for a whistle. Exactly five minutes to go in period number two as the teams have uh, certainly uh, ramped up the physicality in this one. And it seems like there's a lot more conversation going on after the whistles as well. Oh, this third period is going to be a beauty, I think. But, yeah, we still got five minutes here. And you know the Bengals are going to try and get this thing tied, and Georgia would love to have that cushion going into the third period. Defensive zone draw here for the Bengals. They find possession of it. Now Gallivan with a chance to carry it through the neutral zone. Stops just inside the blue line. Let's a hard shot go. Looked like he was looking to get a little bit of a rebound off the pads of the goaltender. Newbold just let it go to the corner. And now Joe Lotempio has to retreat back into his own zone before the Bengals start it back up ice. Newman banks it off the near boards, gets it up to Galvin, but he can't get it out of the zone. Good play there by Burnett at the point. Shot there by uh, Bigda goes high and wide off the glass, but Georgia finding possession in the near corner with Conway. Conway with a man on him, as that is uh, Lotempio there for the Bengals trying to create a loose puck. Eventually he does. Can't quite get it to Galvin, though, and it's kept in at the near point by Burnett. Gets it down low to Mazzaro, so he tries to get a backhand pass out in front. Second opportunity does get there. Bartow, though, couldn't find a handle on that one. Mazzaro has the puck in behind the net, but his pass is intercepted. Elliott Hunt just clearing the zone. Sent back in, and now it could be a chance here for Gallivan. Kind of has a step on the defender. On the one hand, on the backhand, good defense. As you mentioned there, Luke Burnett making a solid play. He made a good play in the offensive zone a couple moments ago. Gets back into the defensive zone to, to follow it up with a good play there to negate that opportunity for Gallivan. Under four minutes to go in the period as the Bengals look to start it up out of the zone on the far side. They get it into the neutral zone, but it's sent quickly back in by the Bulldogs. Cole Newman settles it down behind his own net. <laughs> Sidesteps one man, but doesn't really have anyone to give it to. Does get it into the neutral zone, just a hair out of the reach of Gallivan. Thornton from his point position makes sure that one gets up ice, but Gallivan can't get it away from the Georgia player. And now in the counter, it's going to be Whitworth. Whitworth tries to feed it in front. He's got two men there. Eventually his Great teammate save. finds it. And uh, it was Bartow with a chance to add to his uh, goal total here tonight. He had the uh, most recent goal here in this game, and he had a chance right there on the doorstep. A.J. White managing to make the save on that one and keep it a 3-2 hockey game. 3-14 now remaining in the second period as the Bengals are going to get another uh, defensive zone draw to deal with here. See whether or not they can have a little bit more fortune on the faceoffs than they have so far in this contest. I would say that... Uh, Georgia's probably at about 65, 70% so far. Oh, yeah, at the very least. I mean, they're, yeah, Georgia's dominated the dot. That's the only, like, real big decided edge one team has over the other is Georgia's just owning the dot tonight so far. Gutman gets it out of that corner, makes a nice little sidestep move on the Bengals defender and gets an opportunity to get it in on goal. But the Bengals get the zone clearance, and now Guerrero into the offensive zone, tries to sidestep the defender, just can't quite maintain possession. As Gosen comes in to try to offer some assistance. Gutman, though, takes that puck away from him. His pass doesn't connect, and the Bengals get to keep it in on the far side with Krapsy. Krapsy across to Staniszewski. Gets it down low, but nobody in there behind the net. Georgia looks to start their breakout. Gutman against the near boards. Connects on a pass, and now the Bulldogs get it through the neutral zone, but a hair out of the reach of Crawford, and that Ooh, one's going to go for yeah. icing. I thought Crawford got a piece of that one. He was, he was ahead of him, too. And he also had a step on the defender. I think you could have made two different arguments on that play against that icing call, but there's not even going to be a conversation here amongst the officials. Buff State's going to get the benefit of the offensive zone draw. 228 now to go in the second period. Yeah, Bengals lost a little bit of their speed that they had in the first period. They got to get that back because Georgia hasn't lost a step, and that's Georgia's bread and butter. So the Bengals got to match. You don't have to get into a track meet with them. But you got to make, I mean, the, these breakouts are, they're coming easy at this point, except right here. That's the forecheck you need. It's that line of uh, Sardina, Jankowski, and Miller again showing their most, they're being uh, quite effective. Effective shot in on goal there from Georgia. Ends up going just wide, though, as uh, it looked like Eberly had a good opportunity from the mid slot. Bengals are going to look to get it out here on the near side. Jankowski can't get it past the defenseman Poole. He's been excellent here tonight. He's been one of the standout players from Georgia, I thought, so far from his point position. Oh, yeah, the, on the blue line, he's been Georgia's best player, no doubt. And that's not a diss on any of these Bulldogs. No, you have he's several to choose from in that category. Yes. Bengals big defenseman Ryan Hahn looking to start the breakout here. Jankowski catches that pass but can't get around the defenseman Gannon in the neutral zone. Settled down by Mazaros, and uh, now Georgia looking to set it up and move it up ice. 
Gannon with a little bit of room. He connects on a pass, but that second attempt fanned down by Eberly, and he heads to the bench for a change as the Bengals will get a chance to move it up oh ice. This line that is pass was right a little now. bit too slow to get up there, though. It's going to be a chance for Gannon to bring it in. Drops it back, and a huge slap shot by Bigda. Couldn't tell if that hit A.J. White in the mask or not. He doesn't seem to be suffering too much of ill effects from that as the play continues here in the Bengals zone. Back to the point to Gannon. Knocked out of the air by Sardina before it gets to the net. Puck just sitting again. there in the mid-slot. Shot eventually taken by Conway. That hits a skate. Stanishewski now with a chance to get it out. Does get it up ice. And, oh, Sardina right there behind the defenseman. Almost got it off that of his stick. That line's got to get off. That line's got to get off. They're not skating. Uh, Bengals eventually getting that change. Now it's going to be Georgia looking to catch the Bengals in a change. Great, Great change. play, though, as it's Mitch Thornton leaving his feet to keep that pass from getting across. Oh, Did, boy. Danae, they got to get out of this period. They got to survive. And Danae couldn't get that puck out of the zone. Georgia keeping the pressure on. 40 seconds to go in period number two. Eventually, the captain, Joe Lotempio, settles it down and moves it up ice. Gets it to Elliott Hunt. Hunt comes towards the center this of the ice. got to get deep, guys. Of it. Now the Bengals are going to have to battle here in the neutral zone. Eventually, it does get deep. Mitch Thornton listening to you out there on the ice. Make sure it gets dumped in. 22 seconds left in the period. As it looks like it's going to be Elliott Hunt pinning it to the boards. Eventually slides it to Galvin as there are 14 seconds Demon to go now drop. in the second. Demon drop. Puck comes up towards the Buff State blue line, but comes out towards the neutral zone. Denae just dumping it right back in. Takes a bump below our broadcast position. As the last three seconds now Man. of the period ticking away. Right. And a little bit more uh, physicality to end things here in the Georgia zone. Another entertaining period, Sean as uh, we have been treated to quite the contest here so far tonight on Military Appreciation Night. Yes, we certainly have. I mean, both teams brought it. Georgia has the ice tilted slightly in their favor, but that's all right. Uh, the Bengals get out of here. You know, it's disappointing that they gave the lead and then another goal back as quickly as they got it, but they were getting the saves from A.J. White. They, the Bengals are not lacking scoring chances, nor is Georgia. It's been a great game. The goaltenders have been outstanding as well. It's going to literally come down to what – who makes, who makes the last mistake? I think that's what we're going to come down to today. Georgia got the game's first goal about five minutes into the first period. The Bengals tied it on the power play late in period number one, then took the lead in the second period also on the power play. Lead didn't last very long, though, as Georgia struck back with two of their own, and they have a 3-2 lead after two periods of play. You are tuned to Buffalo State College Club hockey and support for the Buffalo State Bengals comes from Militella Realty, Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker. To buy, sell, or lease any office, industrial, retail, or investment property, trust the unparalleled knowledge and experience of Militella Realty. Find them online, militello.com. Our coverage also brought to you by Ivy Lee Pharmacy, a locally owned neighborhood pharmacy for over 60 years. Ivy Lee can cover your immunization needs from flu shots to the newest COVID vaccine, also CBD products, home health care, and all of your other pharmacy needs. Ivy Lee Pharmacy, 2446 Elmwood Avenue in Kenmore. Support comes from Pool Mart, your family fun store. Whether you're looking for a pool, hot tub, patio furniture, supplies, or more, Pool Mart has five locations across Western New York and, nor and Northern Pennsylvania to meet your specific needs. Go online and visit them at poolmartonline.com. Our coverage also brought to you by Colvin Cleaners. Dry cleaning, wash and fold, tailoring, and all garment services Colvin Cleaners, the region's premier green earth dry cleaner. It's also where the Buffalo State Club hockey team goes to keep their uniforms the sharpest in the league. ColvinCleaners.com or visit them on Elmwood Avenue in Kenmore. This broadcast is brought to you by Envious Gameware, the official uniform provider of the Buffalo State Club hockey team. Find them online, EnviousGameware.com. And by 412 Communications, the new gold standard for digital media solutions for small businesses, 412 Communications offers consultation for web and graphic design, social media, writing and editing services, multimedia solutions, and much more. Visit them, 412communications.com, to learn how they can help your brand build bridges with the people you serve. You're watching Buffalo State College Club Hockey on the Nickel City Hockey Network, Western New York's new broadcast home for amateur hockey. We're going to step away here for the second intermission. We're going to be back in about 10 minutes for period number three. Stay tuned.
Buffalo State College Club Hockey is sponsored by Ivy Lee Pharmacy, a locally owned neighborhood pharmacy in Kenmore for over 60 years. By Militello Realty, Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker. By Pool Mart, for any pool, hot tub, or patio need, Pool Mart is your fun store. By 412 Communications, the new gold standard for small business digital media solutions. By Envious Gameware, designers of high-end custom hockey uniforms, bags, and apparel, and the official uniform provider of Buffalo State College Club Hockey. And by Colvin Cleaners. For dry cleaning, wash and fold, tailoring, and more, Colvin Cleaners is who the Bengals trust to keep their uniforms the sharpest in the league. This is the Nickel City Hockey Network, Western New York's new broadcast home for college, high school, and junior hockey.
And welcome back to the Buffalo State Ice Arena as we are set for third period action between the Bengals and Bulldogs. University of Georgia with the 3-2 lead after two periods of play. It's been a wildly entertaining game so far. Look to see who comes out here in the third period and grabs that next bit of momentum. Bengals into the offensive zone. Ben Gallivan letting a hard wrist shot go. Save made on the play by Newbold as the Bengals get that first offensive push here of period number three. Good evening. Thank you for joining our broadcast. My name is Aaron Elpern alongside Sean McHugh, color commentator, as well as John Dwyer, our producer, Jeff Jazarowski, our camera operator. Bengals settling down a puck just inside the blue line. Kind of a redirected shot on the way towards the net. Newbold had to be sharp to make sure he kept an eye on that one. Made a good save eventually. And now Bigta has a chance to carry it out of the zone for Georgia. Has a little bit of a lane here up the left wing. Decides to just try to dump it in. Ends up hitting the linesman with it. Second effort does get it in across the blue line. Georgia now making a change. Setting up some soft pressure here in the offensive zone. Gallivan catching a pass on the far side. Good defense, though, not to give him a lane up that far wall. Georgia dumps it right back into Buffalo State territory. Ryan Hahn looking to get it out of the zone. Good play here at the near point as it was Gannon coming in from his point position. Ryan Miller finding control of the puck here along the near boards. Gets it into the neutral zone. Sardina almost with, with it there, but he does get it across to Gallivan. Gallivan with the step goes to the backhand. Great save by Newbold as Gallivan tried to slide it behind him softly. Newbold kicking out the right pad and making the save, keeping his team out in front by a 3-2 score. And uh, Newbold making that first big save of the period. And uh, the first test there is late in his shift. It was Ben Gallivan getting the opportunity down low. Save was made by Newbold, and it stays a 3-2 hockey game. Bengals, they're going to get an opportunity for an offensive zone draw here, and they win that draw, something they haven't done a whole lot of. Shot comes in from Thornton at the left point. There was a crowd in front of the net. Had to be a little bit difficult for Newbold to see. Did make the save and cover up for a whistle as we're about a minute and a half into the third period. Both teams trying to exert a little bit more dominance here in this contest, Sean. Absolutely, and good to see Buff State getting an offensive zone faceoff. They have not had success doing that, and it's killing their possession time right now. Looking to establish a bit of a forecheck, take a page out of the Georgia handbook right there on you know running their offense. Didn't win that faceoff, but they keep it in. For a moment, that is. Eventually, it comes across the blue line. They have to send it back into the offensive zone. The two teams just trade possession, and then Crawford dumps it into the Bengals zone. Cole Newman starts the breakout up the far side, gets it to Jankowski. He's got plenty of room to get it up ice. His dump-in attempt also hits the linesman. We saw that happen to Georgia just a couple moments ago. Eventually, it comes out to Gutman. Now Georgia with a chance to move it up ice. Gannon slowing things down, just dumping it in across the blue line. No icing on that play. As Cole Newman picking it up and starting the breakout up the far wing to Jankowski. Jankowski dropping it back to Thornton, but that pass didn't quite connect. Opportunity for Georgia to put some pressure on here. Mm. Ill-advised pass there, ends up getting deflected behind the net. Now Ryan Miller's going to have to do some work here in the near corner if the Bengals are going to move it up ice. Miller gets away from a couple of bodies and now has a little bit of a lane to carry it through the neutral zone. Across the blue line, now looking to make a move around the defenseman. Loses control of it, but Ooh, finds it nice again, play. then gets a pass out in front. It sat there for a tantalizing second. Crapsey right at his feet. He was tied up with the defenseman, though, unable to get a hold of that puck before the goaltender covered it up. Newbold makes sure that there was no lingering opportunity for him there. Covers it up for a whistle, 17-28 now remaining here in period number three. And really, really good start to the period in terms of zone time for the Bengals. They're uh, get it, doing a really great job of getting on the Georgia defenseman down low, forcing turnovers and allowing them to cycle. Georgia came out with a lot of pace here in this game. It was uh, something that I was wondering what we were going to see in terms of them making the long bus drive up here from Athens, Georgia. They didn't appear to have any bus legs to start this game at all. Now I think the question is whether or not they can maintain that energy that they had early in the game throughout all three periods. Yep, and that's tough. I mean, they're young kids. They can handle it, but it's going to be interesting to see because Buff State, they slept in their own beds last night. They've been home today. Um, Georgia had to make, you know, they had to come all the way up the East Coast. So we'll see. We'll see if fatigue's a factor or if these young kids can just handle it. Guerrero into the offensive zone, tries to make a move around a defenseman, can't get past him though, comes back to the point. Ryan Hahn lets a shot go. That hits a skate and then goes up in the air. Now a chance for Leighton Poole to settle it down in the far corner. Can't get it, and just barely gets it past Ryan Hahn at the blue line, but it is sent right back in by the Bengals as they look to continue to set up some zone time. Ends up deflecting kind of strangely up and out of play. And so we'll get a stoppage in play. 16-28 now to go in the third period. Still a 3-2 lead in favor of the Georgia Bulldogs. And again, Buff State again just trying to work on that offensive zone pressure right there. They're getting a faceoff outside the zone. The refs are going to drop it at center ice now. 
Uh, not a whole lot has happened to this point. The first two periods were track meets, back and forth, up and down. I think we're getting more of like what you usually see in a first period of two teams unfamiliar with each other, where now we're in the feeling out process because the teams are trying to see where the weakness might be to get that breakthrough. No, that next goal in this game is going to be huge, so I think that's maybe where you see a little bit of the uh, feeling out sort of process at the start of this third period, whereas the first two periods were a lot of run and gun back and forth in the offensive zones. I think both teams are trying to make sure they don't make the mistake that ends up resulting in that next goal, which will be huge in this one goal game. Absolutely, and the goaltenders need to be sharp as well, but this is the thing too. When it goes from run and gun to shots every time you blink to stalemates, you wonder, do you maybe see a goaltender get handcuffed? Do you see a guy maybe off his post early? Do you see a guy maybe caught looking over the shoulder when a surprise shot comes? Well, it's going to be interesting how this period plays out. Georgia getting their first sustained zone time here of the period as they have the puck in that far corner. Comes back to the point. Shot is taken there through a crowd. Parente trying to get that one in on net. Looked like it hit a stick on its way through and then went to the near corner. Bengals look to get it out. Elliott Hunt doing so, getting it up ice to Galvin, but he can't handle that pass. Georgia sends it right back into the offensive zone, then making a wholesale change on the back end, getting a couple new bodies out there as the Bengals have a little bit of an opportunity to get it out. Can't connect on a pass in the neutral zone. That creates another chance for Conway to carry it in for Georgia. Makes a move around the defender, almost pulled it out through his skates. Took a little bit of a bump there from Thornton, and now the Bengals are going to have a chance to move it up ice. Galvin making a nice move to avoid a hit there and make sure it gets deep into the offensive zone. Now he tries to put some pressure on Bigda there, but good job to make sure that puck gets out towards the blue line. Now a two-on-two -two setting up for the Bulldogs. Drop pass into the slot. Conway lets that one go, but it gets blocked on its way there. Ryan Hahn getting in the way of that one. But it's picked up there by Mazaros, and he lets a good hard wrist shot go. Stick and pad save made by A.J. White. Puck in a dangerous spot there for a moment. Eventually cleared off to the corner. Conway then slides it out in front. Pass is intercepted by Gallivan. He just chips it through the neutral zone, then heads off for a change. Elliott Hunt using that speed to put some pressure on the defenseman. Doesn't end up getting to it before it gets to the netminder. Newbold sees that pressure coming and just covers up. So we'll have a faceoff in the Georgia zone with 14-24 now remaining in the third. Yep, uh, Georgia again, really, really nice job answering the early pressure by Buff State with some pressure of their own. And the Bengals again... They're having some trouble when the puck goes high to low on the D, on from D to forward, from the blue line to below the line, the goal line, excuse me. And you're seeing the Bengals defenseman trying to get up ice, then getting caught and having to retreat and kind of getting caught in no man's land. That's how. What? Ooh, that went off the back of the net. I saw the net move there as Sardina let that shot go from kind of a funky angle. I saw the net flutter. He scored. Our know. producer, John, jumped out of his seat. Like, that puck, for, I mean, it's, it's clearly not in. But I saw the net move, and I, that was my first instinct. Yeah, me too. That briefly there on the back of the net. Always got to be paying attention in these things. That, Especially uh, when Brett's shooting the puck, he'll just yeah. let her rip from anywhere. You think he could, as long as he has the time to get one off, you feel like it's going to go in the net if he gets a good shot away. He got a good one there, just a little bit wide in that case. Kind of a little oh, bit wow. of a head fake on our part. We all kind of jumped, and now the puck ends up in the Georgia bench. So. I that kid's trying to kill me, Aaron. I think if he continues to do this, it's just one game into your season so far and not even a full game so far. Yeah. It's the school cover bear aspen for me to have in the booth at all times because if not, we might have a problem. I think uh, Bader blockers are fine for an in-game meal. All right, great. That's what we're going to do then. Georgia winning that faceoff in their own zone. Gannon starting the breakout up the near side. Connects on a pass to right there in the left wing. Bigda, though, his pass through the neutral zone doesn't connect. No icing, though. As Stanishewski goes back there forward for the Bengals. Loose puck against the boards. Sardino Janikowski okay? just kind of, like, yeah, just kind of, it it right? like, looked like a little bit of a miscommunication there between Sardina and Jankowski. Not sure which one was supposed to go and get that puck. Eventually like allows uh, allows Georgia just to keep that puck in the offensive zone, and this is a line that's been very effective for Georgia here tonight. Great play to save the icing right there. Yeah, Ryan Miller kind of blindly throwing that stick out to get a hold of that pass, but it's Gannon quickly back in the offensive zone. Bengals could get some numbers out of this, though. Two on two, two on two coming into the offensive zone. There was a third player there, kind of stumbled on his way out of the zone. Miller now battling in the far side as he looks for some support. Help him. Has it pinned to the boards, gets it out to Sardina. Sardina kind of angles his away from his man, spins and now has a lane. Let's the shot go, but a good save by Newbold as Brett Sardina looked to have a uh, individual effort reminiscent of some things that he did last year there in the offensive Don't zone. Don't bring that up. I never want to hear about that again. Well, just make sure you keep an eye on the guy wearing the white helmet for the Bengals here tonight. It's he to miss is him. certainly able to uh, pull some things out of his hat. Here's here another go. guy that has some ability to do those sort of things. Michael Guerrero into the offensive zone. Tries to Shoot get it. wide on the defenseman. 
two defensemen there making sure he didn't have a whole lot of room to maneuver there. Under 12.30 to go in regulation as Georgia looks to counter back into that back and forth affair that we started this game out with. Yeah, I like that better. Pass to the point, doesn't connect, and now a Georgia defenseman, Leighton Poole, has to go back along his own blue line to pick it up. He has to avoid a stick that was just laying there. Bengals get a hold of a loose puck and send it into the Georgia zone. Well, settling it down and looking to start the breakout is going to be Campbell. A couple of passes connect down along the Georgia goal. They still have uh, plenty of room to move it up ice. Leighton Poole does so, but his pass is behind its intended target, so that one's going to go for icing. And the Bengals are going to get an offensive zone draw coming up. 11.55 remains here in regulation. It's a 3-2 hockey game as we wait and see who will break the ice here in period number three. Buff State again, though. They're getting those offensive zone face-offs. They're, they're doing a really good job. Georgia looks like they're trying to get back to that pedal to the metal Back and forth style of hockey they were playing. Buff State doing a real, oh, loose puck! Hey! Oh, ben Gallivan finds the loose puck. It came right in on goal off the draw. Looked like Joel Otempio just tried to play it to the net front. Caught everybody by surprise. Comes right out to Ben Gallivan, pokes it in with one hand, and we've got ourselves a 3-3 hockey game. Uh, I'm gonna hear I'm gonna hear from the boys about that when I just went yay when he scored. But again, again, the Bengals, the beneficiary of a bounce, again. That's how you stay in games like this. Again, the Bengals, something they weren't able to do early, winning faceoffs, getting, excuse me, getting possession off faceoffs. Goaltender, like we asked, was a goalie gonna get handcuffed? He got handcuffed right there, and then the worst player to lose track of when the puck is in your goal crease was all by himself, and Gallivan gets this game tied just a hair above halfway through the second period. Ben Gallivan with his third on the season has the third Bengals goal as well, and we got ourselves a tie hockey game here, 11.30 to go in regulation. We expected a great battle right here from the outset. We've been treated to one so far, and now we're back exactly where we started with the tie hockey game with a little bit more than 11 minutes to go in regulation. Third Buffalo State goal scored by number eight, Ben Gallivan. Assist to number 28, Joe Lotempio. Gallivan from Lotempio. Time of the goal, 8.08. As we approach the 11 minute mark in the third period, it is dumped in across the Bengals blue line. Georgia trying to make a change here as Ryan Hahn retreats for that loose puck. Crapsy helping him out, looking to start the breakout up the far side, but Guerrero can't get to that pass. And now Georgia connects on a pass in the slot. That pass was a little bit dangerous, though, and now the Bengals are going to have a chance to move it up ice. Crapsy, though, running into the linesman here below our broadcast position. It's been a thing tonight. And now it's kept in the zone here by the Georgia Bulldogs, and they're going to get a chance down low as that shot was let go by Bigda from right around the faceoff dot. Another chance down low as that puck comes out in front of Punzenberger. Just couldn't quite get the shot away. And now Crapsy tries to get around the defenseman in the offensive zone. Hunt finds his man on the back door, and Guerrero let a good quick shot go. Good save by Newbold, probably his best of the game so far. Yeah, that was something. That was a great rush right there. Nick Crapsy, my, my roller pal from back in the day, he's looking for that first collegiate goal. He's had every opportunity twice to get it. I mean... If I'm Turner, I might look into giving him a couple more shifts. He's getting chances and looks. I mean, let's let's try anything right here. Yeah, this line had a couple of goals in the first week's game against Brockport. And now it's an opportunity to set something up down low. And this is Alex Gosen. He had a heck of a game against Brockport. Sets up his point man, Cole Newman. That shot doesn't get through traffic, however. Georgia with a chance to clear. Slowly into the Bengals zone. No icing on this play as Mazaros fires a pass in front. Didn't have anyone trailing, however, on the play. But Georgia keeps it moving in the far corner. This is Bartow with it. Gets it back to the point. Poole's shot goes wide here, wide of the near post. Comes back to the near point where Parente tries to get it through. Loses a stick in the process, and that gives the Bengals a lane to get it through the neutral zone and back into Georgia territory. Poole tries to get it up ice quickly as the Bengals were making a change. Georgia barely staying him, onside. Man going there for the back door, just couldn't get the pass across. Sean saw him. None of the Bengals defenders, however, Thornton did. Thornton did. Thornton had no idea he was there. That pass gets across. We're in trouble. Loose puck picked up by Sardina, floats it through the neutral zone. Stotes almost gets in behind the defenseman, actually did get behind the defenseman. Good read there by Newbold to see that those numbers weren't going to work out for his defenseman in terms of that speed for that loose puck. No, oh, that was that was that that was a train of trouble bearing down on the goaltender. He had to make a split second decision and he made the right one. And there. if he hesitates for a moment, then that's a golden scoring opportunity. That's a goal. That's you, a goal. Yeah, you have to make that decision quickly, and he did so in that case. An excellent read by Nick Newbold. 
Puck in the Bengals zone now as they look to move it up the near boards. Jankowski can't get it past the defenseman, but Ryan Hahn intercepts a pass. Now he carries it through the neutral zone. Backhand in on goal, chases in after it. Newbold smartly covers that one up as he sees that big train barreling down towards him. 8.27 to go in the third period. It's a 3-3 hockey game. Certainly appreciate you joining us for this one. It's been a dandy so far. We expect the next eight and a half to be just as good. I I agree, and I don't want to speak for anybody, but we've been treated to an outstanding hockey game so far. We've had a little bit of everything that you want in a good game. Physical play, nothing dirty, nothing nothing over the top, some offense, some speed. I can't wait to see how this game ends. There's a little bit wow. more physicality from one of the Bengals' more skilled players, Ben Galvin throwing a hit into his man right into the Bengals' bench. Good things happen for the Bengals when he starts playing that way. He developed that physical edge to his game late last year, Somewhere. and there was a whole new level to his hockey that we saw, and that says something for a guy that scored 25 goals last year. Loose puck in front of the net. georgia has got a golden opportunity, and they put it home. It's Gutman finding that loose puck, and he had nothing but net to fire it into. He could have waited a day and a half to do so. Eventually tucks it inside the far post, and Georgia takes the 4-3 lead. I hate to be this way, but the Bengals just haven't learned yet that that is what is going to kill them today if something is going to take them down. That is the third time. The third time a puck has been sitting in a slot and at least two Bengals had a chance to get it out. They don't, and a Georgia Bulldog just picks up the puck with a wide open net and can deposit it three different ways and not miss unless he tries to. Bengals have to climb the hill now because they just gave another goal back. So we're under eight minutes to go and Georgia has taken the 4-3 lead in this contest. As we always look to see right after a goal, what is the response going to be from the team that gives it up? Bengals into the offensive zone, That's trying to get response. an opportunity right away. Caden Mendick letting a shot go. Good glove save made by Newbold. Bengals are going to get an offensive zone draw out of this. And it's a little bit of a uh, reworked line here as they've juggled things around a little bit. This is Sardina with Mendick and Jankowski. A little bit of a change in some of the wingers on this unit. Yeah, it looks like it's our, yeah, they're shuffling it up. Maybe trying to get some more, yeah, trying to just maybe balance it out a little bit. It's working. Fourth Georgia goal scored by number 22, Trevor Gutman. Assist to number five, Dylan Spicer. And number 19, Daniel Crawford. Gutman from Spicer and Crawford. Time of the Georgia goal, 12.03. Cole Newman settling down the puck in his own zone, but he makes an errant pass that gets quickly intercepted. Now an opportunity down low. A good defensive play there as sliding over to provide some coverage with Steve Pernetta making sure that that opportunity to get shot in from the mid slot didn't have enough room to get it in on goal. Got that stick in the shooting lane. That's the only thing that kept that from being a repeat of what we've seen multiple other times here in this game. Georgia players pretty much wide open in the mid slot, getting an opportunity to fire pucks in at A.J. White uncontested. No, you're not going to win a lot of games against any team playing that way. With this Georgia team, you just can't be making that mistake, and the Bengals have been burned by it a bunch. Guerrero trying to single-handedly go through two men. Drops it back to Gosen. Can't settle it down. Thornton slides in from his point position. Crapsey gets that one out in front. Gosen's shot goes just wide. Gosen and Crapsey now digging in that far corner, trying to come up with a loose puck. Georgia breaks that pressure. Now they have a three-on-one into the offensive zone. McDonald with the puck on the far side. Slows it down a little bit. Maybe waited just a little bit too long. Good defense there by the Bengals to make sure there was no real opportunity. Like a penalty. Got a penalty coming up here as a scramble in front of the net. Bengals trying to establish some position there. I'm not sure who took the penalty, but it is going to be a Bengal penalty here eventually when they touch it up. Georgia with possession of it, though, and they get the extra attacker out there to play six on five. This is exactly what Georgia wants. They can just sit there and play with the puck and do whatever they want and kill a lot of time and then head to a power play. If you're Buffalo State, you got to get after this puck right now. Georgia connects on a couple of passes here in the neutral zone. Eventually, they get it across the blue line. That pass doesn't connect. Referee blows the play dead, and we will have the penalty call coming up. 6.05 to go in period number three, and a uh, big opportunity on the power play now coming up for Georgia. They had a good start to their only power play so far here tonight. Got quickly negated by a penalty of their own, and now we see exactly what the penalty call coming up here against Buff State will be as it comes at... 13.55 of period number three, and we wait and see exactly what the call is here. There's a big discussion between the three officials. 
nobody went over to the box to make the call originally, even though yeah, both refs had their arms up. It went up immediately, so I would think when you put your arm up that fast, you're certain of your call, but then again... If I'm Ryan Hahn, I'm not anywhere near the penalty box there. Nope. If they don't know who took the penalty, don't be near the box. Yeah, kind of did some of their work for them, but granted, I mean... I, you, I Try to send somebody into the box that you want to serve the penalty. If they have confusion, give them... Oh, they gave them four minutes, too. It's a four-minute penalty yeah, that's here. Something, that's, that's something a leader on this team just can't do in the third period of a one-goal game. Sorry. Nope. But I absolutely agree. Ryan Hahn wears an A in his jersey, and it's not for plays like that. Nope. So of the 6.06, 6.05 remaining here in regulation, four minutes of penalty time the Bengals are going to have to kill off if they expect to come back and win this game. They do get that zone clear immediately as they kill off a little bit of time. It actually was two different penalties handed out to Ryan Hahn on the play, and so that's why there is the four-minute penalty against Buff State. Buffalo State penalty to number 22, Ryan Hahn. Two minutes for cross-checking and two minutes for holding. Hahn, two minutes for cross-checking and two minutes for holding. Time of the penalty is 13.55. Georgia's going to have a lot of time here to set up their power play. They effectively set it up earlier. This is a little bit sloppy, though, and now maybe a chance. No, not enough speed for Elliott Hunt to get behind the defender on that one. A little bit of help there from the Bulldogs as they uh, clear the zone for the Bengals there. And that's Poole, too. I mean, he pretty much went stride for stride with Sardina, so I don't think anybody – there aren't many players that he's going to see at this level that are going to be able to skate with him. Now he's got it on the far side, tries to set up a pass to the near side. Great Only play. thing that kept that one from happening is Cole Newman diving and getting a stick on that one. A great read and a great play to keep that play from developing. 100% great defense. Newman's had a nice game so far. Big hit. He's been active in the zone. He's been putting forth effort, and he's out there in a big situation again. He's got a man okay. driving in on him right now. Conway tries to get that pass across. Ends up with the puck back on his stick now back towards the right point. What would you do that for? Like a little bit of a confusion. He got sidetracked by his own guy. Had to carry it back into the neutral zone, and now Don't Gannon carries him. it in. Gets that pass down low. Gannon gets it out in front again. Can't settle it down to get a shot away. Takes a bit of a bump, but keeps it deep in the zone. Gets it to Bigda. Good play there by Newman as he was quick again with that read. Got to that passing lane before the puck got across. Ends up getting it cleared the length of the ice for his efforts. If I'm Tim Turner, I'm Newman's not on the bench much longer. Just as soon as he gets his breath back, get him back out there. He's been huge on this penalty kill. Conway Here's the other guy. Pass though. across the uh, blue line. Errantly, though, as Ryan Denae finds that one and gets the clear out to neutral ice. Georgia's going to have to clear the zone before they can carry it back in. They do so, and this is Conway carrying it in. Gets that pass across. Another attempted pass across the front of the crease. Good defense there by Denae to keep that one from happening, but eventually it does come out in front, and Conway gets an opportunity to tee one up. His shot goes just wide, however. Minute 45 in the power play as Conway has it down low. Good defense there by Stotes sliding down low to get in the way of that pass. Bengals are going to get a chance to get it out of the zone here now as Gallivan battles for possession. Why are there guys though, leaving the find, zone? Finding it, though, and getting it down low. As Bengals are kind of chasing around their own zone right now, it ends up working out for them as Stotes carries it up ice. Maybe a two-on-one here. Tries to get it across to Galvin. Can't connect on that one. And now it's going to be Georgia with a chance to move it back in the other direction. This is Campbell with it. Drops that pass back. There he is. And good defense again. Cole Newman, as you suggested, double shift him. Get him right back out there on this penalty kill. Makes another play to help his team out. This time it's a shot from the far side. That was Campbell letting that one go. Another solid save from A.J. White. Campbell again with the puck on his stick on the top of the circle. His shot doesn't get through traffic. Good block there by Denae. Campbell with the cross-ice pass to Burnett. Burnett along the blue line just chips it down low where he has Gutman. Gutman has the go-ahead goal in this game. Georgia still setting up their power play here along the perimeter. They connect on two passes and then slide one through the crease. Looked like that might have been difficult for A.J. White to see, but it ended up sliding just wide. 32 seconds in the double minor against Buff State as Georgia keeping it moving here in the offensive uh, zone. Dude. Gutsman settles it down after gloving it out of the air. Pass connects and a great glove save. A.J. White flashing the leather as Campbell had a glorious opportunity from the hash marks. Best save of the night there by A.J. White. Yes, and it's a good thing he made that save because I'm pretty sure the hand was absolutely closed on that puck when he flagged it down. Yep, under and then a drop. Yeah, it's, you can't do that. No harm, no foul. Not going to cry about it. I'm just really glad that didn't result in the goal. So 16 seconds now remaining in this Georgia power play. They still have possession of it. That pass gets intercepted. The Bengals going to get a chance to move it up ice. 
Carreras settles it down here in the neutral zone, dumps it into the offensive end, hits a defenseman in the back. This might come out towards a beneficial uh -oh. spot. Ends up going in the Georgia be behalf, though. Three on one setting up here. Drop pass for McDonald. Off oh, the post. Campbell let that one go. He's been knocking on the door for his second one here tonight. Almost had it right there. Bengals penalty is over. A minute 55 in regulation as Gallivan drives in towards the net. Pass comes back and a shot taken there as Thornton just had a bit of difficulty settling it down. Couldn't get that shot in on goal. McDonald into the offensive zone. Offsides there. Regroup. group. Bengals settled it down as Georgia tries to clear the zone. Minute 35 remaining in regulation as Guerrero has it along the blue line. Not the smoothest of entries there as uh, the three Bengals players didn't quite work in concert with each other. So that ends up being an offsides. And we'll get a faceoff right below our broadcast position. Here in the neutral zone, minute 32 left in regulation. I think we're going to see a timeout called here. Yep. Buffalo State Bengals taking the timeout, making sure they can get some of their better players, most effective players, rested and ready for these last minute and a half. Yep, this is the time. You have a minute and a half. It's do or die. I would wait to get A.J. White to the bench until you have possession, only because, although they've been better in this third period, Georgia still has an edge in the faceoff dot. You don't want to give them a free look at the open net, so I would wait till you have established zone time. You have enough time to do that with A.J. White in the crease, and then pull, and then run it. Because the thing is, with the man advantage, Buffalo State's two, and a, two, two for two right now, so... And if you're Georgia, keep doing what you're doing. Your speed is your best offense, and it's also your best defense. They've been one man, bre one man breaking out, one pass, and go. The Tyree kill, one short pass, let the speed take it all the way. It's been working like a dream all night. And, if, you know, if the Bengals are not able to get possession, you're going to have someone skating through to try to get an empty netter. And this Georgia team is extremely disciplined. I don't anticipate you're going to see a lot of guys turning around and firing for the selfish empty netter for stat padding. Georgia wants to get out here with a win. They're going to make the right play. So the Bengals are either going to need a bounce or they're going to need to they're going to need to do it right here. All right, so it's a neutral zone draw just outside of the Georgia blue line, right below our broadcast position, and it's going to be a uh, kind of a put together line here. It's uh, Sardina with Hunt and Gallivan out there for Buff State. Newman and Hahn on the defensive end, and the faceoff is one to the boards. Georgia finding possession. Parente carries it up ice. Takes a shot from distance off the pads of A.J. White. Bengals are going to have to find possession oh here now if they're going to move it up ice. I really thought Han took a penalty right it there. It looked like he could have been called for one. It looked like the uh, ref just decided that the uh, player left his skates a little bit too easily. So that's the hence the no call, but the Bengals eventually get it up ice. Gallivan has it in the offensive checker. zone. Backdoor pass as he tries to find Elliott Hunt. Hunt just cycles it around behind the net. Han has to step in from his point position. Bengals net is empty now. Pass comes out in front almost to the back door perfectly. Oh, Han shot had a man backdoor there too, but a great defensive play as the Georgia player getting in the way of that one, making sure that pass didn't get to Hunt on the back door. 51 seconds now remaining in regulation. Right time for this. As Han has some pressure on him down low in his zone. Moves it up ice. Now Guerrero carries it in across the blue line. Shoots it from distance. Pretty Smart easy play. glove save there by Newbold. Smartly decides just to hold on. Make sure that his team has the right personnel out there on the ice. And make sure that there's no running around done in their own zone. That's the last thing a goaltender wants to see from his defenseman late in a game where they're protecting a one-goal lead. And also smart on Michael Guerrero, knowing he's one on George, the state of Georgia right there, and he just puts the puck on net for an offensive zone faceoff versus try and set one up and turn it over. So the Bengals have about 30 seconds. they got to win this faceoff, and they got to set up in the zone. Sardina wins that draw, gets it back to the point. Hans shot hits a skate, comes across out to Guerrero, but his pass for Gallivan doesn't connect. Georgia tries to send it that's towards the empty net. It right. goes wide. Han wins the race for the hash marks. Okay, that's and what you're not now another to do. offensive zone draw coming up here with 25 seconds. There's a different school of thinking there. I think the new way that teams try to play with the other team with the empty net is they fire it from their own zone. Used to be when we were kids, we were told never to do that. You gain the red line before you shoot for that empty net. Teams like to take that risk a little bit more now. Well, the thing is, not to be, I mean, granted, these kids are also like at the Academy of Hockey before they can walk, so they're, Aaron, they're better than we were, let's be honest. Yeah, we were told to, to only dump it in because we didn't have as much offensive ability. We this were, time they wait to gain the red light. Yes. That one goes just wide. But no one's back checking. Finally, some players back here for the Bengals. Newman again forces a loose puck. Go. 11 seconds. It's going to take some uh, speed to make nope. this one happen. Not Good happening. play there by Mazaros to not get greedy trying to look for that empty netter. Just pins it to the boards. Tries to kill off some more time. And it looks like this game's going to come to a conclusion with the puck inside the Bengals zone. And a nice win here for the Georgia Bulldogs. 
as they deal with a long bus ride up the East Coast. But they came out of the bus ready to play here tonight, and they came out with a win for their efforts, a 4-3 win on road ice as they beat the home side Buffalo State Bengals. We were treated to a great hockey game here today, Aaron. I mean, teams, both teams played pretty well. Like we had predicted, the team that made the final mistake was the team that was going to end up losing, and unfortunately, Buffalo State made the final mistake, a mistake they had made twice prior to that, and it bit them once and for all that time. A lot to like, though. I mean, we're not going to be all critical. You played a very good team, a top-five team last season, and you could have beat them. Um, you played well enough to win. You just, you know, bounces, mistakes, it happens. It's part of the game. Um, if I'm the Bengals, I'm not hanging my heads about this. I would identify what they did not do very well. Make sure that plenty of attention is paid to what was done well because there was plenty, plenty to build off of. This doesn't end the season, nor would anybody say it would or think so, but disappointing loss for the Bengals. A lot to like, definitely a lot to clean up, especially on the defensive end. But they got to get back and ready because the thing is, although this team's from Georgia, a different state, this is the opponent being as good as the Bengals have been for the past three years. This is what you're going to see regularly now. It will be a continued busy weekend for both of these schools. Georgia up here in Western New York for a three-game set as game one here at the Buffalo State Ice Arena. They head down to Olean tomorrow where they will take on the defending champions of the UNY CHL as the St. Bonaventure Bonnies have their home opener tomorrow night. Georgia and St. Bonaventure from the Smith Center in Olean tomorrow night. And then Georgia has another game here in Western New York on Sunday afternoon. That is at Niagara at Dwyer Arena. And we will have live coverage of that game on Sunday right here on the Nickel City Hockey Network. Georgia celebrating a victory here as uh, they thank their fans here in attendance. And they get to skate off the ice with a very nice 4-3 victory over the Buffalo State Bengals. Support for Buffalo State Club Hockey comes from Militello Realty, Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker. To buy, sell, or lease any office, industrial, retail, or investment property, trust the unparalleled knowledge and experience of Militello Realty. 856-2872 or militello.com. Our supporters also include Ivy Leaf Pharmacy, a locally owned neighborhood pharmacy for over 60 years, Ivy Lee can cover your immunization needs from flu shots to the newest COVID vaccine, also CBD products, home health care, and all of your other pharmacy needs. Ivy Lee is at 2446 Elmwood Avenue in Kenmore or ivyleepharmacy.com. This broadcast also brought to you by Pool Mart, your family fun store. Whether you're looking for a pool, hot tub, patio furniture, supplies, or more, Pool Mart has five locations across western New York and northern Pennsylvania to meet your specific needs. Online, PoolMartOnline.com. Our coverage is also brought to you by Colvin Cleaners. Dry cleaning, wash and fold, tailoring, and all garment services. Colvin Cleaners, the region's premier green earth dry cleaner. It's also where the Buffalo State Club hockey team goes to keep their uniforms the sharpest in the UNYCHL. Supporters also include Envious Gameware, the official uniform provider of Buffalo State College Club hockey. Find them online, EnviousGameware.com. And supporters include 412 Communications, the new gold standard for digital media solutions for small businesses, 412communications.com. And, Sean, let's uh, award three stars here of tonight's game and uh, certainly a lot of players that put in great performances from both sides. Certainly a lot to choose from. And uh, looking at some of the choices you've made here, what, what do we got for a third star? I'm going to go with A.J. White for the third star. And the reason I do that is he, you know, he was hung out to dry a couple times by his teammates. You know, Georgia, especially early in this game, had a chance to blow this thing open. And then um, after that, um, you know, A.J. kept him in the game, allowed them to get close, and then, after, and then, you know, kept him in it, got them the lead, kept it a one-goal game. And for you, Aaron, who do you got for the yeah, second, second star? Yeah, second star, I think there were a lot of players, uh, both from Georgia's, you know, forward and defense core, a lot to like in terms of the depth from, from what they showed here tonight. A lot of defensemen are really solid in this game. I thought Burnett was really good. Also was very impressed uh, by Campbell and Gannon from the back end. But I think the second star from his work up front was Declan Conway, number 29. That line was the most effective Georgia line throughout the game. Buff State had a hard time getting the puck out of their zone when Conway's group was out there. I like Declan Conway as the number two star. And the number one star, also from Georgia, 
I am going to go with uh, Leighton Poole. Um, you probably don't see a whole bunch of him on the score sheet. You didn't see a whole bunch of the flashy plays, and I'm sorry to a lot of people who are going to eye roll me and give me the Milbury treatment on this, but the Bengals threw a line at Georgia that usually is the, fast, is the fastest line on the ice when they're out there, and Leighton Poole took that away. Uh, Leighton Poole, not only was he great on the puck, he was a one-man breakout for his team, whether it was skating, whether it was passing, whether he was leading the rush. When he was on the rink, it was almost like you had that point guard or you had that safety behind you where you feel more confident to do what you want to do as a team knowing that you have that guy back there in case it breaks down. And that's yeah. why I think he's the best. And I think we do have to give an honorable mention to Brett Sardina. He was yeah. outstanding today. Liked a lot of what I saw from Ben Gallivan today and Guerrera. No surprise there, though. I mean, we come to expect that from those guys at this point. I really want to shout out to Cole Newman. You know, he made the transition from forward to defenseman late last season because the Bengals just simply didn't have numbers back there. You know, he started off the game with a massive hit after the Bengals were down, trying to just keep the momentum going. On that four-minute penalty kill when the Bengals had to kill it, he was huge for that. You know, it, you, know you go from being a player that has to be converted into a defenseman last year. He played some defense earlier on in his playing career, but had to switch positions to help his team out, and now I think he's the most reliable defenseman on the team. So now he was. Yeah. Him, Cole Newman was the most reliable defenseman out there along with Ryan Denny, just... And like I said, I want I wanted to touch on that for a second because the Bengals didn't have that player last yeah, year. Today, they had, today's been a nice addition on the The back. guys they had, I mean, granted, they weren't. that's not to say the Bengals weren't willing to throw the body. Plenty of guys on the team were. Some of them might have been a little too willing to throw the body, especially at bad times. What I like from Dene is you see him, Dene, excuse me, when you see him, and no, you, you can't miss him either when he's out there. He's the stocky guy with the gorgeous hair. But... You know, you see that guy out there, and you see him buzzing around. You know, if you have that puck, you're gonna you're gonna get a jolt from him, whether it's in your hip or you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a stick. So just, I mean, we had a lot. A lot. The high, the players brought their games tonight. Like the, the players who are supposed to play played tonight. We got everything we needed. Georgia got the last laugh here. Georgia got the last bounce. Buff State made the last mistake. Got the whatever you want to hear, whatever you want to call it. Georgia won a game that if you played it ten times, I would. I mean, I think we're probably looking at five five or six four. Well, they certainly have a big test in front of them tomorrow as they head down to Olean to face St. Bonaventure, the defending champions of the UNYCHL. That got and, uh, loaded. St. Bonaventure uh, came out with a narrow win over Rochester today by a 9 nothing count. That's just three three-pointers. You can do that in a period. Saint oh, wait, no, that's not – no, wait, no, wrong sport. No, that's a big win. Bonaventure graduated a bunch of players from their championship team last year, but uh, <laughs> they have reloaded in a big way, and they start off with an impressive win. Over Rochester, 9 to nothing. Meanwhile, it was Niagara beating Niagara County Community College 9-2 to two tonight. That's So some interesting. interesting scores so far in the UNYCHL. A ton of games this weekend in the league. 21 different games involving UNYCHL teams. So uh, a lot to keep track of. And uh, we will bring you some updated scores tomorrow as the Bengals are again in action tomorrow night. Bengals will be on the road facing their crosstown rival again, the University of Buffalo. These, those two schools met last week. The Bengals are going to look for some revenge for that loss on home ice. That game is 6 o'clock tomorrow on the Nickel City Hockey Network. Meanwhile, St. Bonaventure will be hosting these Georgia Bulldogs tomorrow in Olean. And then Sunday, it is Georgia at Niagara. And we will have coverage of that one here on the Nickel City Hockey Network as well. We hope you can join us for those games later on this weekend. Thank you so much for joining us for this game tonight. It's a heck of a game as well. Georgia and Buffalo State, a 4-3 battle here from the Buffalo State Ice Arena. For color commentator Sean McHugh, producer John Dwyer, camera operator Jeff Jazerowski, my name's Aaron Elper, and thanks for joining us. Have a good rest of your Friday night, and enjoy the rest of the weekend.